Alright, 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 what's up everybody and welcome back to Bronze to GM. We had a bit of a break, I was on holiday over in uh, Japan for the first time. Uh, learning all about different cultures, just kidding, just eating all their delicious food, it was a good time. But we're back now and we're continuing Bronze to GM. Uh, we're in Diamond 3 today guys, so let's talk you guys through all of the new changes to the build and what we're going to be adding in. And you know what, the build is largely unchanged, the main thing we're going to be doing today is uh, going on and off gas. Uh, a little bit more. That's going to be something we have to get used to. Let's go drone scout and rally that drone back. Uh, so we're actually going to be pulling off gas, putting back on gas at about 3 minutes 30, which is going to be absolutely massive. It's going to be game changing because, of course, last week in Platinum, last month, I guess, but <laughs> last episode, I uh, I actually was uh, really short on minerals whenever I was building Freddie Mercury, our Creep Queens. And that was costing me. It just felt a bit awkward, you know? It didn't feel as ideal um, as it sometimes does. Now, we are going gas pool. I'm looking at the wrong build order right now. I'm sorry, guys. Oh, let's see what's happening. Okay, yeah. 17 hatch, 18 gas, 17 pool. That is right. Oh, my God. <laughs> I freaked out for a second because I was just practicing the ZVZ build order. And I was like, wait a second. Are we meant to take gas straight away? We're going to rally these eggs onto gas. And then we're going to rally down to that natural. Now, of course, I'm still a little bit rusty getting the co cobwebs off. So I, I might not be perfect this first game or two. We're still going to try and explain everything we're doing. And, uh, and get you guys up to date. So let's go. We've got the drone scout. It sees the buildings are in my opponent's base. We're starting up against a 3150 Terran player. Who's just on the very low end of Diamond 3. High end of Platinum. We're going to build an Overlord on 20. And remember, we're always clicking these early Overlords out to get that Ring of Vision around our bases. Pool's done. So we want to build two Queens and four Lings for safety here. Um, Okie dokie dokie doke. And we're just going to be building more. And check it out, guys. 100 gas, start Ling speed, and you want to pull off gas. So grab them, do a second box to grab the next one. Click on the minerals. And if you want, I also press the return cargo button which is a button which pops up in those scenarios. Now we're gonna lose an Overlord, guys. If you ever mess up like that, just build a few extra Overlords immediately and then go back to droning before the Overlord dies. I'm holding the drone key down. I'm like, build drones, build drones. And I got one extra drone started just before that went down. A lot of people stare at the Overlord and they go, oh, can I keep it alive? Ah, you know, what's going on? It's way better for you if you just immediately start it. Now let's go for that third hatchery. And remember, what do we do after the third hatchery, everybody? We go straight for an Overlord and a third queen. So in this case, queen, we've already built that overlord because we built two ahead of time. And we're just going to be building some drones now. So the third queen's on the way. Of course, we've got Lizzie in the main, Cersei in the natural. And guess what, guys? This is our first lava inject. So inject Lizzie, inject Cersei, hold down the drone key. But here's a special thing. You put back on gas about now. So we're going to control click those eggs, click them there. And then I'm going to click one of the eggs and click them there. Now that was pretty inefficient. So an easier way to do that as we build a few more overlords here is if when you are going to produce, you can click the hatchery, build three drones and click on the gas or just select both hatcheries is probably a better one for where we are. Diamond three, we're still not that high in APM, I would imagine. So probably better to just select the hatcheries, build three drones and click them on there. Anyway, let's keep these injects going. Inject, inject, hold down that drone key, build an extra overlord. And you know what, guys? It is time! Because it's 3 minutes 30. Uh, or it's, it's kind of like 4 minutes. It's natural saturation time. We need to be going... Do -do -do. Bane Nest and Second Gas. We can change this Rally Point here as well. And we also are going to be building around a Safety Lings and building Freddy Mercury. So let's build Freddy Mercury. Latifa can go over there and start injecting. And let's build one big round of safety zerglings. A few more overlords. And we're going to inject the main, inject the natural. You guys can see I'm a little bit rusty here. All right, I'm going to just grab a few drones there. Put them there. And a few more from there. Put them on the minerals. So now that's all balanced out, we can rally to the third. And we can say, okay, I've got the Banely Nest. Second gas mining. I've got Freddie Mercury building right now. Okay, we can go back to droning. And remember, we want to fully drone this third base. So we're a little bit off cycle, but that's okay. We'll fix it up. You can see the injects are there. So let's go inject Lizzie, inject Cersei, inject Latifah. What the hell is this? Okay, big attack, guys. What do we do when you see a big attack? You pull back. You morph Thanes because we've seen Hellions and Marines. We pull our Queens back as well. We're going to grab these Queens. Control click, shift four. 
bringing our queens up here. We're doing nothing but building lings, queens. And we're going to A move now. So we're going to A move. Uh, there's some much better micro I could do here that I was thinking of doing. And it looks like we will just barely be able to defend. I'm still building zerglings. Now I would inject my hatcheries, but notice we've already pulled all of our queens over to fight. So we can't really do that. But if we've spent all our lava and we've still got money, whenever you're in an emergency, try to build more queens. Especially if your queens are dying like this. Whoo! So the advanced micro I would have liked to do there was spreading my lings and banes to here and over here so they don't take as much splash damage as they go in. But I decided not to do that because I figure a lot of you wouldn't really be able to do that under pressure. Um, now his army came from the right of the map. So what did I do? I just went shift A move and then I can shift left click a zergling, pull it back. He's coming down that side now as well. I don't, that doesn't look scary, guys. This looks like a distraction. If you can identify that your opponent's trying to distract you, just A move it, don't stare at it. Go back to macro. Inject, inject, inject. Hold down the drone key. And we're just gonna send some more lings out. I don't know where these units are coming from, guys. So I'm putting lings all over the map right now. Right click, shift, left click. Right click, shift, left click. Right click, shift, left click. I just saw some more red dots. It looks like Hellions. Why is there a tank there, guys? I do not know. <laughs> what in the hell? What's going on? All right, don't get distracted. Do the build. Double Evo, double macro hatch. Remember? Fourth base and fifth base. All in one go, guys. I'm still building Zerglings rather than drones, but that's okay. He's got that tank in a new position. Now, remember, we've only got Freddy alive. No Mercury. So we're going to conscript Lizzie... Uh, sorry, Cersei and Latifa. We're going to inject and that shift four, shift four. We're also going to make some Banelings. So we've got Banelings to clear the Hellions and Marines and Zerglings will beat the Siege Tanks. Latifa's very brave. So you've got to be careful. Notice Latifa. Cersei's a bit of a psycho as well. Any, any chance to stab and she'll get on in there. But you can see now, do we attack? No, no, no. We want to move down into the open a little bit and then we can attack this area. And we can attack with uh, these two. Now, notice our units all clump there. We could have anticipated that and preemptively sent some lings over this side. Because you can see how bad that angle is, right? If they get tanks in corners. So whenever you see tanks like that, always try to split, split some lings off to the side ahead to try and do that. Now, big fight happened. What do we do? Inject, inject, inject. Guess what? We can't inject. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab our queen key. Inject, inject like that. And then we're just going to select Freddy and go control four. So that gets reset. We're then gonna build more Zerglings. We're gonna make a few more Banes. This game's been kind of wild. I'm gonna build Spores. Why? Because I have a Spidey sense thing. Like, my opponent's been throwing the kitchen sink at me. I feel like air units might come, invisible units, and we'll just build Spore Crawlers. A lot of people always question, should I build Spores, shouldn't I? If you're dealing with a lot of invisible units, you're getting paranoid, just chuck them down. As long as you don't throw them down too early in the game. If you're up on three bases, which, well, to be fair, I've lost a lot of workers, so I didn't realize how many of those died. <laughs> Let's rebuild those workers first. Inject Lizzie, inject Cersei, inject Latifah, and let's inject, uh, build some drones and click them up here as well. Chat's pointing out you haven't hotkeyed any of your extra hatcheries. Absolutely, and I didn't really have the APM to do it, so it's important after you fight and you settle things down, do a macro cycle number one, and then start like adding upgrades and doing other things. So control click, shift one. Fourth base and fifth base, looks like those drones died before they get there. So we're gonna go to our natural or our third. Box the drones, jump to the fourth camera location, build hatchery. Jump to the fifth camera location, build hatchery. And what else are we doing, guys? Next time, macro cycle. Inject, inject, inject. Build a few more drones here. Build nothing but zerglings. And let's send a zergling in there as well. Shift, deselect a zergling. And another one on the frontal path. Shift, deselect a zergling. Control two. And check it out. Oh, there's a new attack coming. Okay, cool. Well, let's make baneling speed, guys. We've got more Banes on the way as well. Uh, we're making a lot of Overlords right now. Shift 4. Uh, sorry, Shift um, 1, I should say. Shift 1. We can rally all these hatcheries to here. Now, I've only got Freddy for creep, so let's also build another Queen. And Cersei, I'm changing your name to Mercury, okay? Now, I was reading the comments on our last episode, and I did notice a lot of you were trying to explain to me that uh, Freddy Mercury is not actually uh one band member uh two band members of queen 
But uh, yeah, what, what you guys aren't true fans. What you don't realize is that uh, yes, he was because that's how good his voice was. So that's all right. As always, uh, people in YouTube comments focusing on the important things. Um, <laughs> uh, to be fair, not really the biggest fan of Queen, but uh, I mean, how can you not have grown up with their music, man? Oh, look, that's an army, guys. So what are we going to do? Are we going to just A move it? No, he's setting up a stupid push again, so we're just going to grab half our army. Alt 7. We're going to send that around the map, but we're just going to bust him while the rest of our units pull back. Because you know he's setting up like his weird tank position over here again. We're going to wait for Baneling speed. We're going to make plus 2 melee. Inject Lizzie, inject Cersei, inject Latifah. Hold down that Zergling key. Shift 2. Notice I've got an Overlord in here, guys, so we can click back. Control Shift, left click, and then remake our army group. So he's like, oh, look at me, look at me, I'm so scary. I'm just going to make a ton more Banes, a ton more Zerglings. And he's not fighting me yet, so these guys are going to go in and win the game now. Okay, guys? Hopefully no wall off on the natural. Let's go. Probably not the best use of my Banelings, guys. We're just going to move these guys in here. As always, remember, when you get in the base, split them up. Split them into the Mineral Lions, especially. It's one of the main things you want to do. And that's going to be perfect. Keep some of the lings, just on all the production facilities, so anything popping out just kind of dies. And now he's going to be forced to attack with his army. So let's go. See, he has to come forward. So I knew he had to come forward, even if he was still sieged. I'd already built so many units here, I felt we could kind of aim move forward. Now look, he's added Widow Mines, guys. I was not expecting that, was I? So let's clump our whole army on it. Just kidding, guys. How do you counter Widow Mines? If they're in clumps, just grab a few Banelings. It takes three Banelings to blow up Widow Mines. So if you're ever running over an army, guys, like this, and you see some Widow Mines, you're like, oh god. What you can do is you can box and then detonate. And even if you detonate five or six Banelings, you're going to kill them before they shoot, which is way more important than just detonating the, the three Banelings required. Especially if there's a big clump of Widow Mines, people go, ah, I died a mass Widow Mine, man. Just have a bunch of Banelings in your army. You don't need a lot of Banelings, right? You just need a handful of Banelings, and they will always manage to stop that. Very good, um, weird Hellbat tank, Blue Flame Hellbat tank marine push from my opponent there. Apparently this is called the Goblin Catapult build, he's saying? In Twitch chat? Um, Senju, the Mad Dog, was talking about this one yesterday. I, I just realized this is the build you were talking about on stream, weren't you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's a fun build, mate. Alright guys, what did I screw up? Any criticisms on this first game back into the show? Um, we're still a little bit... Uh, a little bit, you know, uh, jiggly, a little bit loose. I think put it, pulling off gas, putting back on gas did make me feel a lot more rich in terms of early minerals. Whereas in the previous episode, I felt very poor at that um, that point in the game, right? There was that point around 3.30 to 4 minutes when like you're natural saturated and you're taking second gas, Bane Nest, fourth and fifth queen, round of safety zergens. I really feel like at this stage of the game... I was like, oh, this feels so much better than last week, just because I've saved those those extra minerals. Even just mining, it's like a hundred minerals difference, but that hundred minerals just gives you that little bit of freedom here. And this is with losing an overlord, so obviously that overlord shouldn't have been going in and getting itself killed. And this was essentially a, a one base all in, by the way, guys. Blue flame, making on the tech lab, tanks, hellions, marines, really cool build, but let's focus on what we were doing. So we pulled off gas, we put back on gas uh, at about 3.34 minutes. Um, you can see everything was like not the fastest, not the smoothest as we get used to talking about things again. But second gas, Bane Nest, Freddy Mercury starts up, builds a round of safety Zerglings. Thank God we do that round of safety Zerglings. Because if we didn't do that by, you know, always at two base saturation, build one round of Lings, then go back to droning. You can imagine this attack would be really, really difficult. Possibly a game ender because I didn't see it move out. And... We could argue me sending my lings in and getting them killed is part of the problem, right? We should have probably had ling spotters to see this move out earlier. But I was just focusing on what I was doing with the build and talking you guys through it because that's always the order of priorities. Whenever you guys are learning a build, learning a new adjustment, focus on just memorizing the thing that happens the same every game so you're part of the build. And then little things like, okay, obviously you should have scouting, but how often do you lose your first early four zerglings? Not that often. Should I have put zerglings out there? Yes, but it's lower priority, so... You know, a lot of people go, oh, I made a mistake, I made a mistake. StarCraft's always about priorities, and you've got to train yourself to not be so upset over, like, oh, I missed something. Because StarCraft, you always miss something. Like, always. You will never hit everything perfectly in a game of StarCraft. It does not happen. So, 
Notice we run back and build Banelings. Banelings will wreck Marines and Hellions, even though they're not good versus tanks. So Lings are good versus tanks. Banelings are good versus these. And remember I said, ideally, what I would have done here just before I engaged is I would have uh, spread my units out. So I would have grabbed some Banes and Lings, clicked them out here, grabbed some Banes and Lings, clicked them over here. Just that way, your units are naturally going to be attacking down here, down here, and down here, rather than all clumping up together. I was lucky, because tanks seem to be targeting my queens and zerglings. He didn't target fire them at all. People are never going to do that till super high level. And uh, we, we managed to get most of the banelings connecting as well on the, the marines and the hellions. This actually worked out pretty well, man. Um, people are pointing out, perhaps you should have a reaction to one base. Absolutely. So what did we forget to do here? We should have had a one base reaction for sure. Uh, but because we weren't paying attention to our scouting at all, we forgot. So what are you meant to check? If you see they don't have an expansion at the start, remember? Well, it's back to basics. It's back to what we're doing at the very start of the show, which is, oh, we've got to check at 3 minutes 30. I should have been running a Zergling in 3 minutes 30 and going, there's no expansion. And what what do we do? What do we do if there is uh, one base play? Let's go back up here in our document. You guys can see this in the description as always. Swap to army production, Bane Nest, Spore in each base, try to scout what they're doing. Overlord Sacrifice, Ling Scout. So simply by knowing my opponent's on one base, I would have been checking to see, oh, I would have put Lings out here and it would have been nothing but doing massing uh, Ling Bane from there as well, right? So I would have I would have still made the Bane Ling Nest and, uh, and second gas, but I wouldn't really have built any more drones. If I built these eight drones and then noticed my opponent's on one base, that's okay, right? Because I'd be at 41 workers. It's still more than I, I need by far. But remember, in this game, I built a big round of drones for the third because I saw this so late. Right? Did I? Yeah, I just started eight drones as he entered my vision. Which is, that could be 16 more Zergons. So you can see how easy it should be to shut this attack down if you actually do your scouting and reactions properly. What would the response be if you were going roaches? Exact same thing as we just, yeah, exact same thing as we just talked about. Just pump units from once you see that they're on one base, and then go and have them kill them. Roaches are the best early game defensive unit in the world. Um, much easier to defend just about anything, I would say, with roaches than anything else, especially if you use Ravages to buy all the siege tanks. But generally, as always with any tank push, it's just about having your units out early. Like, you should never let them get to where I let my opponents get here. There was like three different huge mistakes that let him get his siege tanks sieged in this position. Whereas you should always be engaging them further out, even off creep if you have to, uh, where they're not sieged up in the perfect position. Yeah. Yeah. If you spread your roaches out, it's pretty key. Like, because roaches do get hammered by siege tanks, but uh, because they're not weak to Hellions or Marines at all, they'd be really, really good. Yeah. Should your creep spread have been more prevalent? No, not at all. He attacked us as our creep queens came out. I mean, you, you can look at a game and, and you can always be like, could you have done this more? Could you have done that? You can do a thousand things more. It's better not to ask, should you do this or should you do that? Just focus on things in terms of order of priorities. I could have probably spread the creep a little bit further earlier, but uh, it was it was not really super important at all. And obviously, we're just kind of talking you guys through what we're doing, so... Depending on the speed, as I kind of find my rhythm for what speed I want to play to showcase you guys things, we'll sometimes play a little bit faster, sometimes a little bit slower. Um, and there's always going to be a, a kind of prioritization based on what's happening in the game. Like, how late are these evos and macro hatcheries? <clears throat> if you just look at the game timer, you go seven minutes, that's really bad. But if you look at the context of, hey, you've stuffed the opponent's one base all in, you've shut that down, you've still got three bases up, it doesn't matter how late everything else is. As long as you're still following your order and you've got a uh, rhythm, you've got some organization, you're going to be getting to where you need to go. Yeah. All right, guys, go to the next one. This is Zerg versus Zerg, which is a tough matchup uh, in terms of it being very different. And I'm sure some of you are going to be like, oh man, learning this new build for ZBZ, it's really hard, pig. I don't, I don't know, man, I'm struggling. Well, I think, think of it this way, guys. Let's cue the Overlord Nigel and then his buddy as well. And uh, let's cue the scout to go across and then come back. 
Uh, this is a really basic matchup. Uh, we're, we're simplifying Zerg versus Zerg. This is like actually the easy mode ZBZ. It's not as flexible and fast paced. In my previous bronze to GM, I was really encouraging people to go and learn the, the Ling Bane aggression and really learn that micro dance because it is very powerful and very flexible and it's what most of the pros use. And I think it's just a good way to, to kind of learn the matchup. But what we're doing here is actually a, a breath of fresh air. If you think about it, we're literally not even taking gas. We've only got one resource for the first like three and a half, four minutes of the game. We're walling our base off, building a safety spine crawler. We're making this a bit easier for ourselves now. I accidentally built one extra drone. Uh oh. And let's slow down a little bit and talk about the basic actions because I think that's one of the main things you all benefit from in Bronze to GM. I know when I'm watching another game that I'm not an expert at and I'm trying to learn it. There is nothing more helpful than um, being able to watch someone in real time kind of explain things as they do them, right? It's always, it's it's very, I don't know, there's something just incredibly useful about it, right? It just, it's it's so easy because you don't need any translation or deep thought. You just kind of monkey see, monkey do. You go, oh, oh, that's what you do in that situation, you know? And it's, it, it's allowing lesser experienced players to start to recognize the patterns, but also understand the patterns as well. So I'll try and explain this. All right, guys, so... 20 supply, build an extra overlord. We stick this one outside our base. Very important to keep an overlord outside your base. Uh, the other two are outside his base, and then we'll put the next one in the middle of the map, of course. Now we stop at 20 supply here for a moment here because we're going to build those zerglings and uh, queens. So here we go, spawning pool's done. We're going to build four zerglings and two queens. Keep droning on up. We can also take two drones, guys, off the main, right? We just had extra drones mining there before the natural was done. Because we don't have gas with this build, that's going to be a little bit different. Now, uh, we want to make sure our third queen starts immediately, guys. So let's start our third queen immediately. We'll start it in the main, since that one started a few seconds early this game. We'll build one more Overlord ahead of time. Because with this build, we do need to build the Overlord earlier, right? That's something you got to pay attention to. You need the Overlord much earlier. Because, well, you're not going for that third base. You're just kind of building extra queens and stuff. So... This, you might think that's Lizzie, but that's not. That's actually uh, Latifah slash Freddy. Uh, I, think, I think it's Freddy, right? Because it's not really going to be injecting at any point in this game. And here we go. We built drones. We're up at 36 supplies. So what do we do at 36? We go double gas. We build a spine crawler. And then we change the rally point in the main back to the minerals because we need a lot of drones there, okay? So Freddy's here defending. Oh! Oh, that's quite a few lings. All right, so these lings are just going to run around and try to scout. It's a lot of lings that we just saw, guys. So Freddy's going to try and pull back. We are building more drones still. I'm not reacting just yet. But if those lings flood out on the map, we definitely will try to. So these lings are going to try to get in for the scout. Just click them in the base. Just just to see. Oh, yeah, they're lings. They're drones. It looks like drones are coming out, which is good. It's not the most important thing. The reason we scouted there, I normally wouldn't bother is specifically because our opponent showed a lot of Zerglings early. That's the only reason. Okay, guys, hold position. Lizzie inject, Cersei inject. Hold that drone key down. And remember, 100 gas, lair, third gas. The next thing we do. The two Evos, I can control group those. I like to put them on six. There's a lot of Banelings coming, guys. So what are we going to do? We're going to pull out of the wall, build another Evo. Do we build a Spine Crawler here? Yeah, we're going to build a bunch of Spines... And uh, we're going to build roaches as soon as our natural's done. Now notice our main saturated, so rally to there. And we're going to bring two drones over here in case we need to re-wall. We're building roaches. Oh no, I'm supply blocked. That's a bit of a bummer. That's a lot of Ling Bane. You know what, guys? I don't think he can get in here. Oh, yes, he can. We're going to build more Evos. Just kind of trying to wall this off. Looks like he's going to... Um, Take out the Roach Horn. So let's go build another Roach Horn down here. <laughs> ah, no, I'm actually building so many um, buildings and roaches and spines. I don't think I need anything else, guys. If we think about this, I've just built way too much defense, right? It's better to overbuild than underbuild defense. But this is probably overkill. Because every time you build a building, you're killing a drone. So oh, I, his attack killed 15 drones simply by me building, like you know, 15 buildings. <laughs> I'm exaggerating, but not not, not that much. Uh, let's go plus one range on this healthy Evo chamber. Let's move these spine crawlers forward to just kind of keep control of the territory. We'll spread a bit of creep out there as well. And all we're doing is building uh, overlords and, um, and roaches here. 
Now you might be like, oh, you're not at the 41 drones. But we're pretty close. I'm, I'm counting it as 41 drones, the three gas. I think this is close enough. We've got the roach warren up now, so we can start roach speed. Now remember, 114 seconds, 80 seconds. So you want to start your plus one range earlier so that those kind of line up. Now he's killing Overlord, so we'll pull this guy back. And we can even make an Overseer and just scout just to see what's going on. But behind it, all we're doing, building Overlords, all that sort of stuff. Let's move out to our third base with these roaches and let's send a drone over there just to make it look a bit more like uh, we're doing normal things. We'll kind of put some spines out here as well. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm trying to take a third base. Just kind of posturing in that regard but inject inject build roaches because remember our attack timing is already decided for us guys we're gonna clean that guy up now i only want to keep a few roaches here because i don't want him to see too many of my guys and we'll start the third base and this is just about setting up for the future but it's also good to make it a bit less obvious what we're going for in this game now notice these two we're going to queue a bunch of injects and they're going to become freddy mercury so they're going to kill some free overlords these roaches i'm going to try and hide them back here and we're going to inject the main and build more roaches. So a few free overlord kills is always pretty nice. If we can get creep over to our third, we can defend it with spines. But if it gets cancelled by Ling Run buys or whatever, it's not a problem. And look, another overlord. So what I can do, check this out, guys. We're going to right-click the overlord and then shift-click back to the hatch, to the lair. So the queen goes back to its injecting location. Now roach speeds is finished, so let's go for it. We're going to grab our big army together. Plus one's almost done. And as always, we always push at this moment. Now... Something I haven't really talked about yet, but you can actually drone behind this attack. So if you want, you can build one more round of roaches, or you can just drone behind it. And I think droning is the safer option. So we'll build a few more drones to finish that. And then we want to go up to about 51 drones, like we did in last week's episode. I think it was on this same map, actually, opposite spawns, um, where we did that one. And we're going to move right up on top of these spines, and we're just going to A move there. Slight lag spike, so the first A move didn't quite register. That's Mass Queen, guys. Mass Queen is not good versus <laughs> roaches. <laughs> you don't want to be going Mass Queen because they, they don't have enough damage. So, as tanky as, as queens are, and as good as they are versus muters and zerglings and all these things, they're not really going to cut the mustard versus other units. So, I'm, I'm building roaches and overlords now behind this off my production, but I'm still staring at my army because I'm realizing this is a high value situation where we can just run in and find out. There's no resistance. Get in there and kill as much as possible. I could have tried to split up, but I still thought maybe there's a big pack of Zerglings or something out there that'll surround me if I split my Roaches up. Turns out there was nothing but Queens. Obviously, we're way ahead there. So let's go back and look at that early defense. And I scouted and I scouted again. I think we actually overscouted in this game. For Diamond 3, I think just keep an eye on your Overlords is all you need to do. If you want to scout with those four Zerglings, just click them around the base from the start. That's all you need to do. And, uh, and go from there. But just keep an eye on your overlords if you really want to. And if you notice them coming, build extra defense. But this wall off's meant to go down at 3 minutes 30 anyway. So I was actually a few seconds late on my wall off because I was staring at my scouting. And this is really important because what we're going to be kind of coming back to today a lot is always hit the rewind button and just check your build. Check what you could do better. Check any moments in the game where you feel you got a bit uh, elevated heartbeat indecisive, paralyzed by too many decision-making choices, anything like that. Those are situations where you want to go, wait a second, let's go back and go back to the system, go back to the plan. My plan would have had two Evos and a Roach Warren down at 3.30. I always put the Queen in the in hold position in the wall. And even if I don't notice it till the Lings are at my doorstep, I still would have had plenty of time to get an Evo, war Evo Chamber, build a couple more spines, we would have been fine. Now, I overbuilt spines. Guys, I think just two more spines was plenty. Or even, do I even need that? I don't think so. If you are good enough at walling off, just one spine is fine. And the reason this is actually better, people say, well, why not just do more? Because I put myself in a very, very bad situation from where I could have been. I could have been massively ahead. Instead, I was not really ahead because I was on two base, my opponent was on three base. My opponent wasn't massing queens, was themselves going to like drone their third a bit and then make roaches, they could have got me. So what's more important is focus on doing one thing well. If you have two queens and a spine, that's a lot of damage behind your wall. As long as you've got enough space, just re-wall and build roaches. Because the roaches are useful for a counter-attack later. You're going to need those roaches anyway, right? That's for your timing attack that you've got planned. So one of the main things you guys really want to do... Just focus on the Evo walls. Oh, looks like they're going to blow up that Evo. Build another Evo here. Looks like they're going to blow up this Evo. Build an Evo there and there. And rather than spending all this money on spines, you can just basically build extra layers of wall off. Now, if it was just a handful of lings, 
just the Evo in the wall. You see 10, 10, 15 lings, you're like, ah, okay. Just put the Evo in the wall. And if it finishes, don't worry about it. A lot of players obsess over, oh, I can't let it finish. I got to get the money back. Oh, guys, your Roaches can kill the Evo. It's 75 minerals. It's not a big deal. And that'll be totally fine. Yeah. Cool. So, uh, yeah. If your Roach Warren dies, make sure you rebuild that immediately. Also, it helped out here because it kind of replaced the hole in the wall, which is really nice. But I think we've come to some really good conclusions from this game. So let's write all those down. Let's, this is actually like really important stuff. Getting to actually refine the, uh, the ZVZ. Analyzing replays. Okay. Game notes from this session. All right, ZVZ, uh, whoops, ZVZ versus Cognuts, walling off versus uh, Bane Bust, right? So don't ever need extra spines. Just focus on walling with Evos and building Roaches plus rebuilding Roachhorn if it goes down. If you really want, the insurance My man. build one extra spine but i think one extra spine is more than enough and that should be absolutely fine um i see people walling off with spine queen and evo so the roach horn doesn't die terrible idea fallen up fallen artorius a spine crawler is very weak to banelings the number of people i see in lower leagues who freaking keep walling off with cannons or spine crawlers or putting the bunker in the wall this thing dies to literally four Banelings. Whereas a Roachhorn has like 900 hit points or 950. It takes, you know, three times as many Banelings to kill, which is a, which is way better. You always want your spines, your bunkers, your cannons behind the big thick boy buildings. Now, so that's that's actually really huge. Apparently Roachhorn only has 800 hit points, says chat. Really, is it that weak? That's weaker than I thought. 850, 850. still. It's a little weaker than I thought. What's an Evo? Evo's the same, isn't it, actually? I think Evo's the same. Oh, Evo's only 750, but it's a much cheaper structure. Yeah, don't ever need extra spines. Just focus on walling with Evos and building roaches. You see, there's, there's all these situations, like these niche situations that pop up. And I'm sure some of you, there's always people, I always come across these comments, people are like frustrated seeing me. They're like, well, why wasn't this written down in the notes beforehand? Um, why aren't you organized enough to actually give us all the tools for success, Pig? Why are you gatekeeping it and hiding it from us? Like, we can handle it. Just give us the frigging info. We'll run with it. I think what people who say that don't realize is that you would need an encyclopedia. It would be... You guys ever... Anyone? I'm a StarCraft audience. You all remember the bloody line of encyclopedias on the shelf. Like, A to B. C to D. E to F. You know? And like... It's just like fucking 50 giant books just to try to have the information. And StarCraft's kind of like that. There's so many of these little niche situations where you won't encounter it for a year straight playing just because of the meta and the way it is. And the meta shifts and suddenly you're encountering the situation after playing for five, eight years, whatever it is, never encountered it. And you've got to learn a new handling of the situation, whether that means breaking it down from scratch or even better, if you're part of the community, if you're playing in my Discord, in a clan group, anything like that, then it's going to be fantastic because it's going to allow you uh, to basically go, oh, hey guys, the frig is going on? There's a battle cruiser, a Viking opening? And the Vikings are killing my corruptors. Like, what's happening? What do I do? Uh, that's, that's really nice because it gives you that ability to just kind of slow down and go, oh, okay. Someone's like, oh, it seems, yep. Yeah, I remember this was actually popular back in 2010. And uh, what you need to do is you just add fungal and it destroys those Vikings. You know, whatever the whatever the counter happens to be or just giving you some more perspective on it. There's always going to be new situations. Like, I just can't prepare you for all of them, which is why as we level up here to Diamond and above, there's going to be a lot more breaking down situations as we see them. And uh, we're going to get systematic about that as well. So what is the rule? Notice I'm always talking about rules that expand beyond the current situation. In that last game... All right, guys, let's go into this map. We've got a 3150 Protoss player. So we're still on the very low end of Diamond 3. But uh, talking about that last game, you've got to realize that basically what did we come up with was not just a specific 0.1% situation. It's a rule, which is don't do too many things, too many different things to counter one problem. Just do one or two things well, and you should do okay. So what do I mean by that? 
in that last game, I built Evos and Spines. Right? I went Evos and Spines and all the rest of it. Oh, check it out, guys. He's going to block my base. So we're going to go over to my third base here. Ah, Diamond League. So we're building drones in the meantime, guys. So we're going up. So our hatchery, you can see, is a few supply late here on 19 because I kept spending my minerals. That's okay. Shift one. Double tap. Send to the camera location. And we now just need to macro with that. We're also going to move the overlord over here so we can spot if it gets cannoned. Build gas and build a spawning pool. And notice I'm trying to pull a worker that doesn't have minerals to build the spawning pool and gas if I can. Now we're going to build one more drone rally on the gas. One more drone rally on the gas. This guy, of course, will return to the minerals. He sees what looks like a standard expand build. We'll get Nigel, put him on the pillar. Last drone on the gas back at home. And we can now rally to our natural, which is, of course, on our third base in this scenario. Now, if you forget to move this overlord down here, you're going to realize there's cannons finishing. And uh, <laughs> guys like Florencio will give you a lot of problems. So try to always remember that, guys. If you have to, if you get blocked, send that overlord down there. And we'll have a good time, man. All right. So, uh... ZVP, exactly the same as ZVT, remember guys. ZVT, ZVP, it's just kind of our standard build order. And uh, we're going to be pulling off gas, putting back on gas. Let's get a queen. And, oh. Four zerglings and another queen. This overlord can move out here. Just putting a few overlords outside my base. We see a nexus, which is good. Link speed. And remember, pull off gas. So you box two guys, and then you do another box. And we send those down. And remember, 32 supply, we want to go for that third hatchery. So what can we do? We can just grab one of these drones, send it there ahead of time. Our lings? Where are we going to chill with our lings, guys? Well, we're going to chill at the third base, because that's most exposed. At super high level, I would split those queens up. Inject Lizzie. We'll inject Cersei in a moment, because Cersei's very late. Or actually, I guess it's Latifa. Oh, jeez. Is this... Is that Lizzie and this... Is Cersei and that's Latifa? Oh, God. I haven't got a naming rule for this situation. Anyways... Uh, we did build the hatchery a little early, so let's build a few more drones, and let's go third queen, and then overlord, okay? So we're still sticking to the normal rhythm. Notice we move the queen forward. If they come with an adept, move your queen forward, keep your lings back. Don't chase it off creep until you've got ling speed. And when the shade comes in, you can just click on that shade with the lings, and they'll track it. Now, if they are up in between the rally here, all you do is you just change that rally point to there until the adept's gone, okay? Which is not too far away. Inject inject keep building drones and because there's an adept here and there could be more just four lings isn't really enough so if they're they've got adepts on the map at all guys just build six or eight more zergans go up to 10 12 14 whatever the number is and that way you can just a move the adepts and you don't have to worry about it anymore now check it out guys past 3 30 so let's go back on gas we had other more important things to focus on totally okay to be a bit late delayed on that all right latifah's out so she's going to spread creep back to here Inject, inject, inject. Keep building drones. And overlords. So, overlord on the top. Build overlord, click it on the bottom. Remember, build overlord, right click on the minimap. Build overlord, right click on the minimap. So important. We've got extra guys here, so let's go second gas baneling nest. And we can also build three drones. Click them on there. And that means saturated main, saturated third. We're going to rally to this base. What do we do at this point? You guys know what we do at this point. Freddie Mercury start up. Inject, inject, inject. Build a big round of safety zerglings. Shift two. Keep building extra overlords. And at this point, clicking all our overlords in the back. I don't need to left click here, guys. I can do I'm normally doing that on the minimap, remember. I'm just clicking there to show you what's happening for those who are not noticing the clicks on the minimap, even when I'm describing them. I'm, I'm, I'm constantly going and showing things, but normally I don't need to actually jump my screen there. Keep that in mind. Uh, okay, so back to droning here, getting ready for our next cycle. Oh my god! Alright guys, uh, I'm gonna click the adept and we're gonna hover. That there, because it's yellow, that means they have glaive adepts. Which means they're very good versus lings and the like. So let's pull away. We're gonna just run away here. We're waiting for banelings, okay? So we've morphed banelings and we're running away. We're running away. We're making more zerglings and we're gonna follow the shade. If the queens die, it's not the end of the world. As long as your drones survive, we're gonna send them back to our natural. Oh, and look at that. The Banelings just got some big juicies, is what I like to call those. So we're going to just chase him. And because that's shut down now, inject, inject, inject. Build Zerglings. Now check it out. Those are invisible units in our main, guys. So we'll send the Queen to kill the Prism. 
we're going to build spores on each base. And we're going to make a lair here, because that main base is going to die. We're going to grab the queens. We're going to put those on our Freddy Mercury key, because we need them to defend these guys also on our Freddy Mercury key. And we'll bring our lings up here. Now, these drones are dying, but the hatchery is actually going to survive. So we've got plenty of army. So we've got to make an executive decision in this scenario to just hold the drone key down. Because we've got to go, okay, I've defended. I'm alive here. Pretty quick crisis management by me. Should have noticed that warp prism coming in earlier, shouldn't I, guys? That's okay. We haven't really been scouting today because I'm focusing on talking you guys through the new pulling off gas, putting back on gas, as well as everything else we're doing. And because of that, we're kind of ignoring our scouting. Now, he's coming with what appears to be more stalkers, adepts. We're going to send some lings to see if he has an expansion. And we're going to spread these workers back out, okay? So, we've got three workers on gas. A few more guys there. Once the lair's finished, we'll make an overseer immediately. Let's put that spore crawl here. I'll even put a spine in the main just to help to defend that base. And we're going to pull that queen off that control group. That queen off that control group. That queen off that control group. Actually, shift four. That way we've still got Freddie Mercury. And those guys, Freddie Mercury, they're going to go up here to the edge of the main. Just because of that prism's there. In case it comes back in, okay? Inject, inject, inject. Build a few more drones on that gas. And that's our 54 drones. So all we should do now is build nothing but lings and banes and fix up our infrastructure. Double macro hatch, double evo chamber. First of all, right? And we want to replace those drones. So build more drones, click them on the minerals. Shift click our hatcheries. Shift one. Okay, let's put some lings out on the map to see if our opponent's coming to attack us at any point. Using the shift D select, pull them back. Inject, inject, inject. Build more Zerglings. Now, what else do we want, guys? Fourth base and fifth base. I actually didn't set up those camera locations this game. I was a bit distracted. So there we go. Fourth and fifth base. Let's make some Banelings just for safety. And how many gases are we on right now, guys? Only two gas. And you can see I'm kind of starved for it, right? Because we lost so much gas mining. So we're going to make it just an adjustment and say, dude, I, haven't even, I can't even start my upgrades right now. Let's just take two more gases. Build three drones, click on the gas. Build three drones, click on the gas. Now we've got an attack warning. And it looks like, okay, there's an arc on top there. Fair enough. Inject, inject, inject. Make baneling speed. Make 1-1 one, one upgrades. We still don't have the gas for it, so we're just waiting for that. So let's do uh, a little bit of a macro cycle. Build some more zerglings, all that stuff. And come back at 150 gas. All right, let's just A move this. Just make sure he runs away. We get that carapace upgrade going. Inject, inject, inject. Build zerglings. Now let's go and hotkey these bases. Shift one. Shift one. And we're going to bring down Freddy Mercury. There are anti-air. Let's also build one more queen and add this one. Shift four. So those guys plus Ling Bane should be our, our counter to this Archon drop. As long as we, uh, we follow up well enough. Still building nothing but Ling Bane to keep things simple. Let's also send an Overseer through their base to scout. Now you can see the Archons are trying to get fancy here. We're going to try and spread a little bit more creep. And guess what? We're distracted. What are we doing? We're distracted for a while. Inject, inject, inject. Build more Zerglings. Build a few more Overlords. Alright, what do we got for the army, guys? Is it Mass Archon? Colossus? That sort of stuff? If so, we should be teching to Hive. Let's start an Infestation Pit in case that is the case. What's this army look like? If it's just Stalkers, we can do it with Massling Bane. And it looks like they're three base, and I'm going to, you know, five bases. So, Stalkers are really bad against what I've got. But they've got a lot of Zealots. Okay, Zealots are countered by Banelings. This should be fine. As long as we hit when there's not too many Archons, we should be okay. If you can blow up everything else and surround the Archons, you will crush it. Inject, inject, inject. Build Zerglings. Let's try and surround this Archon, shall we? These Archons. See, they're away from the shield battery, and I'm going to control click the Banelings, and we're going to move those towards the Zealots, guys. So this is what you want to do against Protoss a lot of the time. Try to control click your Banelings and just move them into the middle of the Zealots. Try to move them kind of past their army, and whenever they're getting stuck, but not actually blowing up, you can um, click them on that. And then they're just kind of A-moved in the mineral line, because I figured, hey, they're surrounding the probes. That'll be good. We select our hatchery, build a big round of Zerglings, shift two, inject, 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 build more Zerglings. 
Now, this army was going to get... If he got 6-7 Archons with, like, plus 2 attack, some Zealots guarding them, this was going to get really inefficient for me, especially if he's fighting with shield batteries. So you got to realize that this, you know, could have gone very bad for me very quickly. He's got no damage there, right? A few units. So we're just going to kind of click on these buildings with the separate Zerglings. Or we can make enough Banelings to just blow the whole wall off. Either way, he's pretty dead here. So inject, inject, inject. <clears throat> Build more Zerglings. And of course, we could drone more here. We definitely can transfer from our main. Build some more droney drones. And what is this? Okay, he's got some Archons up. Now, obviously, you don't need to attack here. We're just doing it because we're so far ahead. But what would the next step be? As I said, build a few more drones. Get the hive, which is in our natural, not our main. I had to go looking for the hive. I was like, where's my where's my lair? And he's going to come out and try to... Because he's the one who has to get expansions up. So notice I'm moving in, I'm moving in. We're A moving. Control click the banelings and just click them on the cyber core. To open that wall off up. And we're going to click those banelings right into that mineral line. Now, notice the units are still kind of getting stuck. And notice the Banelings. Hey, clumped up Zealots. So I grabbed the Banelings and I just clicked them on those Zealots nearby. A move probably would have done the job. We're just trying to show you guys more micro in these fights, more, you know, adjusting to each scenario. You're not going to do all of these things by any means, but if you can start to add one or two things, like a lot of people like to hotkey the Banelings separately from the Zerglings in this matchup. The reason why I don't like to get too used to that is we still want to do a lot of splitting our army up and coming from multiple sides. And even when I went for the big attack, I probably should have been coming from two sides. The reason I didn't is because I scouted. I only saw a couple of Archons and I said, hey, as long as I surround the Archons with the Massling quickly and then the Banelings go forward and clear the Zealots, it's basically just a few Archons getting surrounded by Massling, which is fine. The problem is it scales very badly for me, right? So if I didn't attack right then, gets, like I said, eight, nine Archons with a battery overcharge, they'll kill like 400 Banelings and they'll lose like one Archon because the splash damage just is so brutal. The more Archons they get and the more my Ling Bane clumps up. Um, that was a really scary pressure from my opponent. Could I have seen this coming? Well, let's remember, what did we forget to do this game? And this is what you guys are going to do. You're going to be like, man, I forgot to Overlord Scout or I sent it in, but I didn't look at it or something like that. So our Overlord should be sitting over here every game. Remember for that sacrifice. And if we sent that in at 3 minutes 30, let's say it goes in at 4 minutes, just flies through the main base. What would it have seen? Let's take a look. 4 minutes, it flies in. The Stalker's killing it. But we see a Robo, a Twilight getting chronoed. We immediately would have said, oh, okay. What is this build? So let's start understanding our opponent's builds. A lot of players in Diamond, they're like, man, just don't know how to get better. I'm, I'm stuck. And I'm like, cool, what are you struggling with? And they're like, um... Well, I'm not getting higher on the ladder. That's what I'm struggling with. And I'm like, no, like, what are you losing to? Like, what strategies? Like, what, what's happening? They're like, Protoss? And I'm like, why is there a question mark when you say Protoss? And they're like, uh, like, what, what builds are the Protoss players doing? And they're like, sometimes they build the shooty guys. And I'm like, okay, you're in Diamond 3 and you still don't know the names of your opponent's units. You don't know what their builds are or their tech. Like, come on, man. Like... <laughs> and obviously everyone progresses at their own level some people in silver league kind of know all the meta build names from all the pros and stuff some people get to gm and they don't know the name of a single build just because they've figured the game out they're a real intuitive learner so the important thing here is to understand this build order on a basic level and what's our opponent doing it's a four gate clave adept attack right so notice they've got a normal just one gate expand they've gone you know gateway nexus cyber core that sort of stuff but now they've got four gateways a warp prism, resonating glaives, which gives a 45% attack boost to those adepts. And they're basically just going to hit us with a ton of adepts. Now, he's also, even though we didn't spot it, going to follow up with those DTs, which I was not expecting. He's going to drop that any moment now, I would imagine. He could have hit a lot faster if he was a pro gamer, of course. He also left his door wide open for a few seconds there, not too long. Pretty, pretty good execution for this MMR. That's pretty nice. So if I knew this was the case, what would I have done, guys? I would have stopped droning here no matter what, and I would have started making Banelings and more Zerglings um, just to see what's going on. I probably would have tried to get some Zerglings out on these expansions, which, to be fair, I probably should have already had, right? Probably should have already had those Zerglings out there to see if there's an expansion behind it. Um, the funny thing is, I probably wouldn't be building Spore Crawlers, but... I would probably have built a single spore crawler on the natural just in case like one in a central position that i can quickly move to the main or the third but i'd be focused on shutting this down and just having that earlier info even if these banelings were more 10 seconds quicker 
that actually defends the Dark Templar. And this is something you guys want to be thinking about. A lot of players are like, oh, what? How does having Banelings defend Dark Templar, pig? And now there's one of you with 300 IQ is going, well, guess what? You don't need to see Dark Templar to detonate Banelings on them to take them out, right? No, that's some stupid high skill or hard to pull off. Pros almost never do it. It's no, it's not. It's not efficient trying to find where the blur is and blow Banelings up on it. That's not what I'm talking about. We're talking about if I'm not scrambling, running drones in circles around my hatchery for the one minute leading into this Dark Templar attack, I'm going to notice that prism rotating into my main. I'm going to be on top of it. I'm going to be noticing the moment a blur starts to morph in. My spores are going to start immediately in that main base, as opposed to me going, oh crap, there's DTs in here killing my stuff. Now let's start spores, right? It's a very big difference depending on how quickly you get access to this, right? So um that's that's actually actually massive it also means i'd have more mining here more gas more minerals going i'd probably have my lair i'd be able to start a lair and spore crawl as much earlier in response so you know it would just put me in a better situation and even if i do lose the main a little bit like but what if you lost the main he could have focused the hatchery i think my opponent here could have i think ran out of name could have killed my hatchery guess what doesn't matter because i'd still have two bases mining versus two base especially if he loses the dark templar or the warp prism how does he secure a third? Because my Lings can then cancel his third base. He's got nothing at home. He's got to very slowly move out to take his third. And that's and you could just rebuild your base immediately. Go back towards your normal plan. To get these sort of surprise maneuvers off, your opponents are often committing more than, uh, than you think they are, right? And if you just stay focused, you'll be good. Now, ran out of name, unfortunately. Did the, uh, the Derpy Derp attack the hatchery for 900 hit points and then decided to change targets to the drones. This is an important pointer for ran out of name, guys, which is decisiveness is the most important thing in StarCraft. What we saw there was attack the hatchery, then it go for the queens, then go for the drones, then go back for the hatchery, then lose all three DTs. So it could have been just go for the drones or just go for the hatchery. But what we saw there was indecision. The moment you find yourself umming and eyeing in StarCraft, you've already lost. You don't have time to think in StarCraft. You have to just do things and build rules for yourself. Because don't get me wrong, you're going to find yourself, especially the newer you are as a player, trying to think and trying to figure out what to do in the heat of the moment. But you will improve way quicker if you immediately go, that is not a feeling I want to get too used to. The next time I'm in this situation, my rule for myself as ran out of name is always target the hatchery. If I see no detection, always target the hatchery and then try to shift click those DTs back away. So hopefully they escape before the spore crawler finishes. We can either recall them or pick them up with the prism. And behind it, I go home, I take my third, I go charge, I build my gateways, I do whatever his transition is, right? You have this like little set play. That's the difference between a player who's going to make it out of diamond is a player who keeps adding those detailed organizations and systems and the player who has the diamond conundrum, which is tight opening like ran out of name had, really cool opening. And then guess what? We hit the point where the fighting happens and we go... Oh, I have to adapt. I have to adapt. Therefore, what does adapting mean? And I've, this is in, I've, I've talked to thousands. I've coached thousands of StarCraft players over my career. Talked to thousands more. Casual, competitive, pro gamers, all sorts. And what do they say? They say, I need to be adaptive. I need to react once the fighting happens. Therefore, I can't have a plan. And I go, if you want to make sure you lose every game you ever play and you're always disorganized and chaotic, your heart's always jumping up into your throat and you're panicking and you're nervous and sweaty, then sure, never have a plan. Or build systems for those situations to make them less chaotic. And you'll find you can just play the game and it plays itself once you build those systems. Remember what we've been talking about through this whole bronze to GM? It should be like tying your shoelaces. Defending an Archon drop should be like tying your shoelaces. A move Freddie Mercury over to defend it. A move the army. Go back, do a macro cycle. Add the next step of the build. That bam, bam, bam. That should feel like a, a rhythm to you, a muscle memory, something that's settled deep in the back of your brain that you don't need to actively think about. And it's the same thing here with when you're doing an attack as well. Try to build these systems for yourself, guys, and you will find yourself much better off. Now, it's not going to happen overnight, but if you have that as the goal, that's going to be a huge mental game changer from a lot of players who feel the goal is to basically go to play as fast as I can. Panicky, panicky. The more panicky I am, the better I'm playing StarCraft, which locks you into a state of not really improving because you feel that the goal is to actually play frantically and remember organized urgency there should definitely be an element of urgency there's an element of speed in starcraft but that's only going to be impactful for you if you 
actually mesh it with a high level of organization. If you don't have the organization, that urgency is gonna hurt you. You're better off taking a breath, slowing down. Organization first and foremost, guys. Legend. All right, guys, let's go. We got ourselves a Terran player, Sexy Drone, who skipped a lecture to, uh, to play and uh, actually learned Terran from our previous Bronze to GM. So that'll be interesting to see. Uh, let's send that drone scout across the map. That's a little late. And let's try to really make sure we are a bit better on our scouting this game. Because I feel like we're struggling scouting wise in these games. Third base, fourth base, fifth base. Rally point. Let's get those camera locations going. Fantastic. And we'll get that 17 hatch down. Okie doke. All right, guys. I'm really excited here. This is a smaller map. Not the easiest to play uh, ZVT on. But honestly, does it really matter that much? Could argue now. Nah. So Overlord's just going to sit out to the left side ready to sacrifice, guys. And then we can take this drone, go for the gas. We're in Diamond 3 now, so let's make sure we start actually using set drones for things, yeah? Look at that. The moment we have 200 minerals, get that pool down. Starting to add little details. We're in Diamond 3 now, guys. You know, we're a Diamond StarCraft player. Time to start doing those big boy tactics, hey? We're going to rally to the natural. And we're rallying to separate sides of the mineral line just so the workers are naturally spreading themselves across that mineral line. Tiny little bit of efficiency there. And we manually rally to the last drone to the gas. Now you might think that's only 15, but remember we've got the 16th drone. That'll rally home to complete that mineral line. That could have been an overlord, right? 19 overlord, often what we do here. You build it on 20, it's not the end of the world though. Just means you're gonna not be able to start. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's probably better to start your queens at the same time anyway, to be honest, actually. So yeah, I think my hatchery was on time this game, so it doesn't really matter. It doesn't change much. Two queens, four zerglings, bam, bam. What's next, guys? Pull off gas, of course, right? So what you can do is if you're really pro, 88 gas is when you, just after he returns it, you start pulling them off, start link speed, and then you send these guys down to the natural. Cute way of doing it. Now we've got a reaper hanging out. Standard Reaper harass defense. Okay, now problem, that Reaper could stop us from taking a third base. So we're going to send our Lings forward. Now, if you try to move past, you can try to catch him. Or if he tries to run up the ramp, you can catch him there as well. Problem, he's blocking my third, isn't he? So what are we going to do? We're going to send the drone and we're going to A-move the Lings with it. And then we're just going to inject, inject. And can we build that third? Yes, we can. Cool. Even if they, the thing is, if we weren't able to get that down, I would have just immediately let Lance Zerglings keep chasing it. I would have sent a drone over here and I would have turned that drone into an extractor. But we got it, so it's all good. Third queen, overlord, back to droning. Okay. Feeling really good here. This looks like a decent opening. I'm just going to shuffle these overlords out a little bit, have a little bit more vision uh, of where the units could come in. Inject, inject. And just keep building overlords and drones here. Obviously, we're just waiting for that overlord to pop that we built earlier. Holding the drone key down. And remember, first lava inject goes back on minerals, guys. So notice we're just going to drag a nice little line there and click on the gas. Would have been better if we remembered to do that earlier, but it is what it is. Uh, let's send a zergling over there. A few zergling scouts out just to kind of see what's up. And actually... Oh, okay. We'll just, we'll just kill that reaper. Okay, he's already got these guys. Pull back, inject, inject, creep, and then move to the third. And uh, let's build that round of safety zerglings here. Just a, just a small one, because it's Hellions. We don't need too many, just enough to stop them running by. We still need to keep droning, because even though we're fully saturated, we uh, obviously don't actually have like an abundance of drones. We don't have it in the red, just barely saturated on these bases. And let's get Freddie Mercury started as well, okay? Tifa's going to go back there, move the Lings back, let the Queen take the first volley, and then go in with the Zergans. And if you can move past and then A move, notice we got a surround. So pull back, let them come in really deep on creep, and that way they can't escape. We just got distracted by fighting. What do we do? Same as always. Inject, inject, inject. Hold that drone key down. Build a few more overlords, and continue the build. So let's put guys on gas. This guy's rallied there to replace those drones, remember? Got that. Let's rally to the third. Oh, we, that, we accidentally changed that rally point. Whoops, bad pig, bad. That's all right. Freddy's out, so we'll spread creep. Mercury's out, shift four for both of those. And they can uh, both kind of come down the front. Notice, saturated, saturated. So rally to the third. 
Another macro cycle. What's this, guys? Viking and Hellions. Hellions on their own will A move it, but don't stare at it. Inject, inject, inject. Hold the drone key down. And let's pull these guys away. So we can build a spore there. A spore there. And a spore there. Remember, we always build a spore in every base when dealing with libs. Now, I don't know exactly where the lib is. We're going to see if we can hit it from behind, but this is always a bit fragile. You don't want to lose the queen, right? So notice I move there, but I also hold position as well to make sure it doesn't kind of accidentally move a bit deeper. Apparently that spore never started. And I'm building a bunch more drones and clicking them on the minerals. Now, the natural's in trouble, so pull those drones away. We should have moved this queen there ahead of time. But it is what it is. And it looks like that should be a dead liberator. Okay, cool. Let's go back to injecting. Injecting. Put back on gas. Injecting. We're going to build one more round of drones here. And we're going to go fourth base. Fifth base. Double ego chamber. And we're going to rally to this base, because that's the one that is undersaturated. The other ones have plenty of workers. And we'll also go double macro hatch as well. Because we did take the fourth and fifth base a little bit earlier, didn't we? Now, he's being what we call a dickhead and killing all my overlords. So we're going to send Freddy Mercury to stop that. We're going to also spread creep across these bases. And remember, shift click Freddy Mercury after creep back to safety. Okay, or just shift A move. Get bad. Transfuse. Kill. Inject, inject, inject. Swap to pure Zergling production, but we're massively supply blocks. So it is what it is. Make a lair. Shift click, shift one. And we've got so many drones. Look at that, guys. So we're going to take a big pack of those. We overbuilt drones here. And you might think, oh, I screwed up. But that's good. It's better to, when you're taking damage and things are messy, it's better to overbuild workers. And then go, oh, I've got too many. Because you're going to lose some to harassment. You're going to uh, spend some building buildings, all this sort of stuff. Let's start one one. Inject Lizzie. Inject Cersei. Inject Latifah. Build Zerglings, which we desperately need. We have no Zerglings right now, so we are being a little bit dangerous. That supply block slowing down my Zerglings coming out was a big, big problem. So at this point, we're blind. So let's send an Overseer in. Well, we can't make Overseer yet, but we'll send an Overlord in. And we're going to put a lot of Zerglings over the map in the near future as well. Okay, guys? Um... But I think we've stabilized, right? We're going to make Bane speed as soon as the lair's done. We're just going to keep on kind of injecting. We'll make a bunch of Banes here to help us out. Inject, inject, inject. Hold that Zergling key down. Shift to add to the add the Bane, link, uh, the Bane speed there. Spread creep now from the bottom to the top. From the window to the wall. Till the creep drips off my balls. Let that creep spread more. Um... Inject, 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 since we've kind of missed a few here, so we've got extra energy. And uh, that was definitely a real song, by the way, guys. If someone musically talented wants to go make that cover, I would uh, I would love it. Stop droning. Yeah, we're basically just going to get ready for our 1-1 one -one time, which is about a minute away. So we're just defending in the meantime. Let's bring Freddie Mercury down here. So that's our only real anti here. Oh, he's got Widow Mines. Okay, guys, so we need Overseers. Where are my Overlords at? Oh, my God. All right, we're going to make a bunch of Overseers. So we more four, shift two. We're gonna make overlord speed. And oh my god, widow mines. Oh my god. Okay. We're gonna come back and try to just clean that up, I guess. Build a bunch of drones there, a bunch of drones there. So we're trying to clean that up, and now he's running into this base being what we call a dickhead. So we're gonna put those drones back on mining. We're gonna build a bunch more drones. And this is where he wants me to chase into his bank into his uh widow mines, guys. So we're gonna take most of my army. Alt 7. We're going to send that over there to counterattack. Everything at home. Inject, inject, inject. Is just building Lings and Banes to stop his attack on the front. Now, this is very important. How do you defend Biomine? We'll send a changeling forward. What you want to do is you just want to take small squads of Lings and Banes. And you just want to click them out into the spread. And blow up those Banes. Now, he's actually further away than I even thought. So, we don't even have as much urgency. And basically, you want to grab 80% of your army and just go across the map and try to kill your opponent. So don't fight on their turns, guys. Just go for the big counterattack, almost always. Click some Banes in the third. Click some Banes in there. Click some Lings in the main. Remember, what do we do with our run buys, guys? We always just kind of click it through all the different bases to get as much damage as possible. Get into the... We're just killing tons of stuff. And behind it, inject. Inject, inject. We still don't have a queen there, so we're going to build that. Build the Zerglings. Make 2-2. Two, two. Now, this is where, of course... What we can do is we can do this. We can grab like a small squad of Ling Bane and an Overseer. Just use shift click there. We can run forward and clean up those Widow Mines that you would have left behind. You can do little spreadies, little spreadies, little spreadies. Now, why do I not really like that? 
because look at how APM that intensive that was. And what did I get from it? Ah, oh, misclicked, I'm panicking. So what's better than doing that, guys? Don't fire on your opponent's terms. Grab, once again, 80% of the army. Moving around the top of the map, Alt 7. And then wait for him to come to me. Widowmines are basically an army that's really hard to push in with, uh, but very easy to set up a big, amazing position and then bait the Zerg into attacking you. So if it's easy to do that, what's the counter as a Zerg player, guys? The counter is to not attack into their big, uh, their big giant setup, right? All right, so we've just lost that base, which is a problem. We lost a lot of drones there as well, but we're still at 64, way more drones than we need. And we're just making tons of banelings. So let's take some more gases. Oh, see, he's gonna come forward. He's trying to bait me in. And what you wanna do here is this micro. You just kind of spread your shit out through their army to make sure the Widow Mines aren't completely disastrous. They're still pretty bad, but not completely disastrous. Now, I'm not confident going in with these guys because he spotted them a while ago. So we're just gonna like hide those in the corner for now and go inject. Apparently I never started Carapace. That's fine, inject, inject. We keep losing Latifa. She keeps dying, man. It's all right, let's put guys on gas. Let's put guys on gas. Let's also take this base. Let's take this base in the top as well. Let's clean that widow mine up. Looks like I didn't do that before. And what are we gonna do? Inject, inject, inject. Mass zerglings. So these guys up here are looking good as a run by, right? we make a few more banes, send some changelings in. He's gonna come in with a drop, which is very annoying. Look at that, he's taxing my APM. So we're gonna run the drones away and shift click back to minerals. And then we can send out Ling Bane to chase it. And this is where we're gonna go spore, 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 spore. And if you're building lots of spores, you're killing drones, remember. So we're building tons more. And we're gonna start spreading a few spores across these bases, just so we can't pull us around too much. We're not doing this as standard every game. We're doing this once we see that our opponent has an inclination to play a certain style. All right, let's get that plus two carapace. Let's also, do we have any Freddie Mercury queens? We do not. Let's cancel the hatchery, get most of your money back, guys. I was about to set up a one-two punch, but he's just set it up for us, right? So we can blow up his fourth base while defending this army in the bottom, yeah? Let's make a few more overseers because they do have a tendency to die. And let's just grab a few lings and banes and click them forward. Oh my God, my army just aggroed forward. <laughs> it's not what I wanted. So we're just gonna keep clicking a few lings and banes forward while our other army, we're A moving into the planetary at home. So just a few lings and veins forward. And notice how much micro he has to do here, not to just straight up lose everything. And now these guys have defeated the army without even using most of my force. So the trick is never fight into the widow mine spread with your whole army. Just click clumps of banelings into it. And don't even look at it. It's probably a better way of doing what I was just doing there. And we can try to bust in here as well. Now remember, I didn't actually mention it, but I should have banelings. You need to click on buildings to blow, blow them up. They won't automatically do that on their own. Um, last week's episode, I kept not mentioning it and being like, why aren't my banelings blowing up the wall? It's like I just had a brain fart. There's so many things when I, when I play slower, there's things that I normally do subconsciously that I like forget to do sometimes. And we can kind of roll on forwards and just kind of go for the big A move, it looks like. Yep. Ooh, all right. Inject, inject, inject. Hold down that Zergling key. And uh, did we have a Freddie Mercury Queen? Looks like they never got rebuilt. Things were pretty chaotic that game. Really good pressure, constant from my opponent, constant disruptions. Halion dives, Viking cleaning up Overlords, Liberator coming in and repositioning and all this sorts of stuff. And if we had a little bit better Overlord, uh, well not Overlord vision, but actual awareness, if we spotted any of those units coming in, this would have been so much nicer, right? Um, there's just a few things where like, hey, why didn't I notice? If I noticed the Lib come in, that would have been good. Just let's rehearse a few things, okay guys? So if I notice that Liberator come in, speaking of which, he wasn't showing up as orange when I was playing, was he? I might I might have the wrong color settings on if so, but I'll, I'll have to double check that. I, I want my, <laughs> I definitely want them to be red and me to be green on the mini map when I'm, when I'm actually playing. Let's take a look. Yeah, I think it showed up like this. I'm pretty sure it did show up like this. That should be the correct color settings. Yeah, I hate this colors. Yeah, no, it should be good. Be careful, there's that button there. If you, color, if you accidentally press it, you might have accidentally changed the color settings, guys. So with this Liberator, um, if we reacted a little quicker, that would have been good. We also, remember, there's a system. So let's go back here. I broke my system and that made this harder. And that's because I was so late to respond, I kind of panicked a little bit. 
So let's search for Liberator. How to deal with Liberator as? So first of all, pull drones, build spore, remove queen to avoid lib zones. Build spores in other base. Is put drones back to mining. Okay. I also move queens behind minerals on other base to intercept reposition. That's something I didn't even write in my Liberator Harass response, but that's really key because if that queen, when I went to build the spore, if I built the spore and moved the queen over here, built the spore and moved the queen over here, when that Liberator comes in, it's going to basically die by the time it sieges up um, to that queen hitting it. So it's really just having your queens on the direction of the Liberator, it makes such a big difference. Having the spore crawler already started, anything like that makes a really big difference here. It really helps you uh, kind of move things along. But yeah, we, we dealt with it eventually, and we did kind of get back to our priorities. It took me a little while. Um, notice, though, I never stopped producing during it, right? Even though I overbuilt drones as a result of that, that helped me absorb all the damage in the chaos. And you actually, a lot of players I see out there, the game gets chaotic, and they end up on a much lower work account than normal because they're stopping to think, how many workers do I have? How many more do I need? And I'm like, hey, if the game's chaotic, just keep producing. And if you're not sure if you have enough drones, just build a full round of drones, in between the macro cycles, you can take stock and you can like in this game go, oh, I've got 63 drones. Normally I stop at 54. That's okay. I'm going to lose some at some point. I'm going to build more buildings at some point. If I've got a few more mining minerals, it's a bit more minerals. That's fine. But the worst thing you can do is basically be going, oh, you know what? I've got enough. What should I build? Let's let my lava sit there for 30 seconds. Let's interrupt my macro cycles. Remember, after every distraction, what are we doing? Inject, inject, inject macros. You know, do the full macro cycle. Build units, build overlords. Inject, 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 build units, build overlords. Whether those are fighting units or drones, it's less important than just keeping the machine rolling. That's lower priority, right? And spreading creep, also not super high priority. Something that once we start getting all the buildings down and the injects and everything back going, then we can kind of start adding creep spread in. So when the opponent's pressuring us like crazy, it's not a priority. Go watch any solar Zerg versus Terran game where he's up against like Maru or Clem or someone and they're in his face start to finish. He doesn't have much creep spread. Only when they're like turtling does his creep spread blossom out on the map. And it's not just because they're clearing it. There are moments in those games where he could be spreading his tumors and they're sitting there inactive. He just has higher priorities, which is surviving basically. So um, yeah, that's really cool. But great pressure, great macro from my opponent. Sexy Drone played a, a real powerful way of playing here and um i think the really big thing we learned from this game is if your opponent's setting up the biomine parade there's two big lessons from this game that we really need to write down so i saw him come in with widow mines and say i knew he was going to stim when i chased him he's going to run backwards my unit's going to clump up on those widow mines this was not a giant scary army i could have just a moved this and done the basic micro remember the basic micro is you box a few lings and banes so if I'm A-move here, I box a few at the front and I click them that way, a few that way, and a few this way. The rest is just A-moved, but you want to make sure your front units, if they're just A-moved, they will clump up on the Marines. They'll all get stuck together in a big clump and the Widow Mines get big hits. But if your front units run past, the Widow Mine shots get dragged past deep either into their friendly territory for friendly fire, heck yeah, Widow Mines working to our favor, or, and, converse, and also away from our big core of Ling Bane. So that's the really big thing, but even better, grab 80% of your army, send it around the map to backstab them, because Widow Mines, it takes a lot of APM for them to siege these all spread out in a fancy little setup. And if you just then take the fight over here, the Terran is going to be very angry because they're like, I spent so long setting up eight Widow Mines in a big pre-spread and 60 Marines. I'm trying to get you to come and fight me on my terms. And what do we never ever do against Terran? We never fight them on their terms, especially with Ling Bane. We always look to backstab them wherever possible. So that's just a really crucial thing. Yeah. Yeah, he also did Widow Mine drop in the main as well, which is like very stressful to deal with. We've got Freddy Mercury and Latifa as a result of that, and a bunch of drones. I was already building a lot of drones to replace the ones the Widow Mine dropped dead. Uh, the Widow Mine dropped killed, thankfully. So you could see I was like basically holding the drone key down while dealing with it because I felt I had a big enough army. And uh, that meant that if you're, if you're, Good at replacing drones, guys, and uh, even overbuilding them when the game's chaotic. You'll find you have a lot more of a robust ability. It's like, just build big one around of drones, go back to building Ling Bane. And, and you do that whenever you take big damage, almost like an instinct. It's like kind of paired together a little bit. And you can see, I mean, this Ling Bane, this first Ling Bane counterattack basically won the game. 
But if I let him set up a parade push and spread his units out, I would have a very different experience. How many workers do we get? 50? 30? 40? It's like, I like that there's a drone in there fighting as well. About 30 workers, but a ton of depots, infrastructure, pulled him home. And if I was a little bit quicker to go home and spend my money, I think we probably could have just already been attacking in the front and winning the game right here at 10 minutes. So even when you're sending that attack in, split the units in the bases, go back, keep spending your money and, uh, and all that sort of stuff. And because this game has already dragged on a lot because of all the pressure he put on me, the third and fourth gas you could see were necessary because I just didn't have enough gas for all the banelings I was being forced to made. make. Not to mention overseers. I had to make a whole bunch of overseers. That's a lot of gas as well. So definitely in this scenario, the longer the game goes, I mean, we've talked about it a lot. Adding a few gases gives you a lot of longevity with this Ling Bane style. Anyway, guys, what's up? We're playing a Zerg versus Zerg here against Unicorn. Uh, 3150 Zerg player. So we've got a lot of players on the lower end of Diamond 3. Trees a few seconds late there. Not the end of the world. Not perfect, but oh, I'll allow it. I remember we go 17 pool just because that helps us stay safe. If it is indeed like a 12 pool, 13 gas, 12 pool, one of these early rushes, uh, that allows us to get our units out a lot quicker. Now we see it's just a hatch first. It's a bit quicker than ours. It's a little bit crisper than ours, but that's okay. You can see my spawning pool's a bit fast. It just allows you to build queens and zergings in your main earlier. It keeps you a little bit safer. Um, and that's going to be really nice. Um, as a Canadian, I know no clue. Nobody calls them Looney Tunes, says chat. Well, you guys call them loonies and toonies. Yes. So this is, this is the, the amazing cultural leap people have to make. They're like, wait, wait, wait. Well, we, we've never called them Looney Tunes. I'm like, you call your money loony and loonies and toonies. Come on. It's not a big leap. It's not a big leap, but Canadians look at me like I'm effing crazy, man. They're like, what? What? Did you not Looney Tunes? And I'm like, you, you call... I'm like, don't you call it a loony? Yes. They're like, do you call it a toonie? Right? It's a toonie, isn't it? The $2 friggin' thing. <laughs> I've heard it called Monopoly money. Americans call money from all of the rest of the world Monopoly money. Because they're fascinated that people use colorful plastic money that doesn't die when it gets wet that's just americans man they're fascinated by basic things like uh power uh power plugs that actually give you a decent voltage all sorts of stuff <laughs> it's not tune it's two it's pronounced exactly the same guys get out of here all right guys obviously trolling americans and canadians enough uh all right guys we're gonna go double gas on 36 supply before people's brains explode. Let's put these overlords outside the base. That overlord out there. And uh, what do we do next, guys? Well, we've got Freddy there. Beginning the defense crew. I put the, the creep tumor nice and far back so it doesn't block us falling off. And inject. Inject. Okay, so you can see. Build a few more overlords. Oh, I forgot my overlord earlier, apparently, guys. So a big supply block on 36 and a big pack of lings coming out, guys. So let's... It's already 3.30 anyway. It's time for us to go for the Roachhorn double Evo chamber. Put Freddy in the wall. Build some more dronies. So this has not been as efficient as it probably could have been. But that's okay. Move the spine forward a little bit. And we are solid. Inject. Inject. You gotta sync those up. If you guys end up messing up your opening, your queens are a bit apart, just wait and let them sync up. Let's go lair because we're past 100 gas now. And third gas goes along with it. Building a few overlords and putting them around my base. And just put that overlord back from that queen. Cool. Alright, so this looks pretty good. Let's go plus one range with our next 100 gas. And check it out, guys. We are at 41 drones after three more. So we've got two more, one more. It's 41 drones. That's all we need. And he's trying to, like, get rid of my vision outside his base. Naughty. That's why we keep two overlords outside. Inject, inject. Build roaches. Shift to the army key. Let's spread that creep, shall we? And let's keep building overlords, shall we? That's going to be real nice. All right. I'm going to try and send these zerglings over here to take that third base, along with my roaches. Just building tons of overlords right now. Now, obviously, I know he has a few more zerglings out here. But once the roaches are out, that'll be fine. Inject, inject, start roach speed now. And you're going to see that's going to time out pretty nicely. 
with uh, with that build roaches as the priority. And let's put all of our guys back there. We're just going to keep these three roaches, a couple of zerglings to, uh, to guard this. Shift into the hatchery key. Oh, overlord sacrifice. Don't see that every day. Let's build a bunch of extra overlords here in between cycle. When you're building roaches, you need heaps of extra overlords. Inject, inject. Oh, they're still off timer slightly. There we go. So it's a little annoying because that breaks your muscle memory a bit. So notice we're trying to kind of hide the roaches back here just so he doesn't know about them. And more and more roaches. So where's roach speed at, guys? You can see that's the later upgrade. That's going to finish in 30 seconds. So we can move out right about now. I'm going to wait for these eggs to pop before we properly move out. Let's just kind of get out here. Move the spine out to the low ground as well in case we need it later. And okay, let's go. So we're going to move across this map, guys. We see an enemy single roach sitting outside the base. Inject, inject. Build more roaches. It's really important for you guys to remember... Wait, 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 wait. Did he have an overlord in this pillar? Is that what I just saw? No, I'm imagining things. It's really important to just grab everything and move across. But while you're moving across, don't seize up and stare at your army. Just keep, keep doing macro cycles. If I could even do one more, that would be fantastic. But it's a few seconds away. I don't want to waste time. So we're just going to move out here. Move in. Plus one's done. Roach speed's done. And we're just going to move on top. And just try to kill these units. We're not trying to avoid his army, guys. We're trying to actually force him to fight. Because he's probably got like 15 roaches building. And if we just don't give him time to get those out, that'll be good. Now, I don't want to chase too far. At a certain point, there is diminishing returns of like chasing him screens and screens away from his base, right? So we can uh, just go into his main and natural now. And if he keeps trying to run... Then guess what? That's where you just click the roach horn down and you say, hey, if you don't deal with this, then you're going to be screwed. Inject, 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 build roaches. Notice while I was moving my army around, I was still selecting my hatcheries in between and just building, building roaches, building overlords. And each time you're just moving on top, so you've got like twice as many roaches as they have. All right, GG, well played. Cool. All right, a little bit of a sloppy uh, game there in terms of the opening, but we can see just how safe we feel. The safety spine crawler and the wall off, it's just like, oh my God. Now, <laughs> I do feel a little bad teaching this because if you always build a safety spine, three queens and a safety wall off this early, it's kind of a little inefficient in some ways. Man, I was very slow to build these drones, by the way. That supply block on 36 really hurt me. So let's go back to our build. Do we actually have the Overlord written down? I'm sure we do, and yet I keep forgetting it because I'm an idiot. Third Queed immediately. Well, it's a third Queen. Um, You know what? We don't actually have the Overlord written down. So let's remember to build that Overlord. Um, 28... 28 Overlord. Let's write 28 Overlord down. I think that's really important because with these builds where you're not going for the third base, you're just constantly trying to spend all that lava, build as many drones as you can. You've got extra drones because you're not building extractors quite as early and stuff. So definitely something where I think 28 supply, which is probably about 230, 220 maybe, would be perfect for that. Yeah, about My 2 minutes man. 15, 20. It's like right after you start... Maybe your queens are halfway done or something. It's 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 pretty early on. You should be going straight for that. So definitely something for us to keep in mind for next time is let's make sure we make that overlord. Really important because that's so different to the fast three hatch build, right? All right, guys, we got ourselves a Zerg versus Protoss here in Diamond 3. Um, if anyone knows Deschanel's MMR, let me know in the Twitch chat. I wasn't paying attention. Thanks for the Bezos box. All right, guys, so the second Overlord, go over our natural and then out front. We build the 14th drone. We're going to rally him to scout the enemy base and then come back home. We're going to set up camera locations. That's number two. That's number three. That's number four. And that can be number five on top as well. Keep building drones. Big thank you, J-Line, for the big 29-month resub. If you guys are enjoying the show, by the way, please don't forget to go check out my Patreon down below. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, you guys can go check that one out and, uh, yeah, give us some support. Otherwise, just subscribe, share the video around if you can't spare any cash. But, uh, you do get access to, like, replay packs from the Bronze to GM and tournaments and all sorts of other things if you do 
uh, you know, subscribe to some of those Patreon tiers. A bunch of other merch and stuff you guys can get your hands on as well. So if you appreciate the show, definitely check it out. Uh, big thanks. Uh, a bunch of you have been dropping, um, what are they called? Super chats or like tips or whatever they are here on YouTube as well. So really appreciate that. I'm always surprised when someone does that, you know? I'm like, oh my God, someone sent me some, some check money or some pesos or this or that. Uh, we're just going to hang around and check that Nexus is going down just to make sure, guys. Thank you very much for the love anyway. Uh, if you guys can't afford to support, like I said, just enjoy the bloody content. Watch it, like, comment, subscribe, ask questions. I do apologize for not being as active on answering questions on Bronze to Jam the last few weeks I've been away. I'm going to be trying to go on at least once a week and answer as many questions on these Bronze to Jam videos in the comments. Um, I know I'm not going to get to everyone, but hopefully I answer enough questions that it helps everybody who doesn't get their question answered. Hopefully, I've already answered the question from someone else and they can kind of read the response there. Uh, as always, Twitch chat's the best place to, to kind of guarantee get answers to your questions. You catch me between games on Twitch chat, you at me in there, I'm almost always going to be responding. Now, anyway, guys, uh, this is ZVP. As we said, it's a 3330 3, MMR player. This overlord's going to wait outside. Nigel there. Let's build link speed. Let's pull these dudes off. And we can... Put them down there. Nice. Always feels good to do that gas pull off, doesn't it? Send one over to the third base. Now, you can always send your four lings across and try to pressure them, this or that. We're just going to keep them at home in case an adept comes over. And remember, we're going to 32 supply and then third base. So, one more drone. We then want to go inject. Inject. Third hatchery. Shift one. Double tap one. Remake camera location. Nicely centered. Set the rally point to the front. Get the third queen, and then an overlord as well. Still, my favorite currency back on that other topic is shekels, for those who don't know. I found out the other week, shekels is a, a real currency, apparently, of Israel. Uh, I thought it was a fantasy money name up until that point, but it has also the coolest money symbol out of any money. I found that was pretty exciting to me. Uh, inject, inject, build more drones and uh, more overlords as well. It has like a cool rune looking symbol. Bloody looks badass. I imagine it's like ancient, an ancient Hebrew symbol for money or something. I don't know. Looks bloody cool. <clears throat> I, I thought it was a crypto at first. My chat's pointing out when they, when I saw it on stream, I was like, oh, someone sent me some, some crypto. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see for over to the third guys. We've got two bases up in mining. So let's go inject, inject, hold the drone key down. Remember we need one more round of drones overlord and then we go second gas baneling next change the rally point back then we're gonna go two more queens and a round of safety zerg so i'm just selecting my hatcheries going queen queen they'll build wherever they build and uh latifah's ready to inject but why are we not injecting her systems guys we're gonna wait to inject all three at once i know some of you are like no do it now but trust me it's better this way i'll build one one or two drones here just to replace these guys on minerals and now time for a macro cycle inject 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 Big round of safety zerglings. Shift two. And build a few overlords. Click to the back. What have we forgot to do, guys? Overlord sacrifice. Uh-oh. I have no idea what my opponent's doing. That's fine. Uh, let's rally to our third base now, guys. You can see the main's oversaturated, as is the natural, but that's fine. Let's go shift four. Shift four. So this is Freddie Mercury. We're going to spread some creep and then send them to the front just with a shift click there. And time for another macro cycle. Inject, inject, inject. What is that? Oh, geez. Okay, guys. Interrupt macro cycle to build spore crawlers. And Freddie Mercury's going to try to come down here to defend this, okay? Now, arguably, I should actually be going up there to defend. Let's move that there. Let's move that into the mineral line. And we're taking damage no matter what, right? So what do we do? Hold the drone key down. I never finished that macro cycle before. I kind of put that one on the back burner for a moment. And let's bring Freddie Mercury up here to try and kill those oracles. Build a few more of these, and let's continue our buildings, guys. Double Evo and double macro hatchery, okay? Don't quite have the money for the other hatchery. I'm just kind of waiting for it. Looks like we might get an Oracle kill, which is cool, but I'm not focusing on it because if you're distracted, your opponent's winning. And I actually built some more queens. You can see this queen's still there. Shift four, inject, inject, inject. Uh, drone count. We need a bunch more drones there. A few more drones there. We took some damage here and a bunch more drones there. So I, I, I went between the bases. I went like, you know, camera location 3, F3, build drones, click. Camera location 2, reselect the hatcheries, build drones, click. You can see I do that really quick. If you guys get comfortable with habits like that, you'd be amazed how fast you can resaturate bases and all that sort of stuff. Let's spread some creep here as well. 
And I think we're in a pretty good spot now. Uh, Lair is very late, though. Lair is very late. Inject, inject, inject. Build lots and lots of Zerglings. Let's put some uh, Zerglings on the map, shall we, guys? So I'm just putting Zerglings all over this map. On most importantly, the bases, attack paths, and then just in a few other areas as well. What we're missing now is our fourth and fifth base. And guess what? Once those are started, we've got everything on the way except Baneling Speed. So this is actually fantastic. So let's do another macro cycle. Inject, inject, inject. Build more Zerglings. We've got actually a lot of lava is only popping now. So let's build Zerglings again. Shift click into two and build some more overlords. Chuck them in the back. Check it out, guys. My opponent's building some pylons. Let's let's see. What's your army look like? Stalkers and Void Rays. Oh, those can't beat Zerglings, guys. So we can basically just aim move that with uh, Zerglings. If we want some Banelings, that's good. For now, let's grab some Zerglings. Alt 8. We're going to go A move. Shift A move. And then my main army is going to click the pylon and then shift click back here. I'm not actually going for an attack. I'm just cleaning up vision. What do we do now? Inject, inject, inject. Build tons of Zerglings. Now we're going to go Baneling Speed as well. So the reason we're really happy to see Void Rays, guys, is they're just going to take forever to kill any Zerglings. Stalkers suck against Zerglings as well. So this is just perfect. If we can attack before he gets like Archons and Colossus, that'll be great. So this is where you basically become a high-level player, throw your pre-planned timing out, and you go and you just make up an attack and go and do it half-cocked. Remember, guys, think about everything we've learned so far in Bronze to Gym. Just randomly A-moving right now? Perfect idea. Or don't be an idiot and stick to the plan. Wait for 1-1. One, one. We can skip Bane Speed if we want, but at least wait for 1-1. One, one. Inject, inject, inject. <laughs> yes, I was joking. Uh, let's add these hatcheries to our key. Shift 1, Shift 1. Let's make some Banes out here. And yeah, I mean, why not just wait 30 seconds for that? We can also try to run Zerglings in on this side. I think he's taking this fourth base because we just lost a Zergling there. Haha! -ha! I wish the Nexus started. We would have got a bit more value there, but it is what it is. That'll run away. Inject, inject, inject. Fill more Zerglings. And you know what? Bane Speed's almost done. Let's just transfer these workers and let's go for the big boom boom, okay? So with this attack, we're basically just going to try and move in, surround the Stalkers. And if we can also click the Banelings by control clicking down here, we're going to control click and then right click on the shield battery. That'll be great. So first of all, these Zerglings are just going to A move the main through this base. And then these guys are what we're going to micro, okay? Looks like his army's out of position, which is, of course, not going to be good for him. We're going to move right on in there, and then we're going to go boom boom. Let me click that shield battery, why not? Let's click some Zerglings on the Nexus. And that is huge damage. Inject, inject, inject. Build more Zerglings. All right, let's look back now. Okay, fight's not going that well for us because we're kind of fighting buildings rather than his army. So let's back away. He's got Colossus. Uh-oh. Late game transition, guys. In take gases take gases. So we're going to go up to six gas. When we do this, whenever our opponent's going to get more splash. Three drones onto gas. Build three drones onto gas. Reselect the hatchery. Jump to the natural. Build three drones onto gas. Build three drones onto gas. And nothing but zergling. So we did just build a bunch of units. Yes. Oh, is he counter-attacking, guys? It looks like he's counter-attacking. So these guys are going to go and uh, base trade on the left side. And our main army is as well. So what are we going to do, guys? We're going to run away. Run away up to the very top. We're going to rally our Zerglings up here. Our Banelings could maybe roll into him. Probably not the best idea, though. And look at that. Oh, Colossus in the open. Okay, these guys can just kind of kill stuff. Now, he's going to go home. Ah, so I was watching his army. Look, he's recalled, guys. So keep running into the meat grinder, yeah? No, of course not. Just kill this and back off. Inject, inject, dead base. So let's try and uh, <laughs> rebuild the dead base, shall we? Meanwhile, let's... Uh, where, where do we run our drones to? Up here? Okay, let's take gases up there. Latifah survived as well. Look at that. So we want to build those drones. Oh, shit. I didn't run all my lings away, guys. Oh, no. Just building drones for the gas. Otherwise, just keep making lings and banes here. Let's try and get 2-2, two, two, shall we? Just in case this game goes on. Uh, Freddy Mercury's still alive, so let's cue some injects on this hatchery, shall we? Maybe on these ones as well. All we're doing now is preparing for the big engage. So I'm going to F2. We're going to select our whole army, bring it here. And we're just going to keep making lings and banes. And we're just going to go for... Like, I'm like, look, you're on two base. You don't have a base. I think we're good. He's trying to make a Templar Archives to add Archons here. 
For some reason he's building void rays, which is actually kind of good because I don't actually have any anti-air. So we're going to go around. Shift 4. Inject. Shift 4. Inject. Shift 4. And then we're going to A-move those queens over here, okay? That's kind of annoying because he's going to kill the hatchery. That's okay. So we'll just build a few more drones down here. Click on the gas. A few more drones. Click on the gas. A few more drones. Click on the minerals. And then just rebuild the hatcheries. And we're doing that out of laziness. That way we don't need to rebuild stuff, guys. The spore crawler did finish there. Did we build new queens? Inject, inject. Let's build a new Latifah. And what are we going to do, guys? Keep building Zerglings. 2-2 Two is almost done. Let's split our army up, shall we? Move over here. Grab maybe half of it. Move down the bottom. Alt-7. Other half up here. Let's make an Overseer as well. Now, obviously, I do need to tech up because these units are going to expire if he gets enough Archons in front of his army. <laughs> I'm taking way too long to actually do that, but I'm hoping that on two base he can't afford that much. And um, it's kind of dawning on me that Archons only cost gas and he's still got gas production no matter what. So we're going to try and hit his economy again here, guys. Let's try and go in with these guys. The other army's A moving in. These guys are going to run away. That's his army. So we're just going to go, ah, right away. Click it back. And then these guys can try to get in there. Kill all of his workers and then get out. So just kill the workers, run away, run away, run away, run away. And then the other guys can try to run in in the bottom, right? Inject, inject, inject. Build more Zerglings. The other guys get in. They did not. Apparently he's fully walled himself. So these guys are going to try and pull him back again. We don't want to fight him head on. Oh, all right. We're going to blow up the cyber core, guys. Or the, the, the pylon actually is good enough. And if we can kill these workers, then it's game over, right? Run away! Run! Run, 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 guys. Run, run, run. Grab all these drones. Grab, grab, run, run, run. Pull back, pull back. Deep on creep, deep on creep. Don't fight out here, guys. No need to fight out here. So we've got lings in the mineral lines of all bases now, right? His economy should be shut down almost completely. I don't think we can stop this army. I think he's actually got it, though. I think we stayed link bait a bit too long. <laughs> I don't think we can stop the army, so we've got a base trade. All right, which is what you should always do. What you should always do. That should be your default, in fact. The fact that I was thinking about fighting his army is bad instincts by me, guys. Um, we're just going to try to build more lings. These guys, I guess, go up there. Oh, man. Got to kill that Archon. Yeah, that Archon is a big problem for us. So notice we're trying to move our lings in for the surround. If we can kill the Archon, we should be okay. And as long as he can't kind of reproduce it all, I think we're okay. So we're going to run drones to the other side. Whenever you're base trading, you got to get ready to uh, to do that. Get the guys off gas onto minerals as well. And always try to hide your overlords in the back corner if you can. Oh, shit. He could recall, couldn't he, guys? In this scenario, always try to focus the Nexus if you can. <laughs> Otherwise, he can recall. Click the Nexus. Click the Nexus. Don't let him rebuild. I actually don't have that many buildings on the map either. So we're just going to quickly take this hatchery, make sure we don't get eliminated. And it looks like we should be good. Unless he has a probe with his army, guys, I think this is game over. Let's grab some Zerglings. Alt 8. Alt 7, sorry. Grab some Zerglings around there. Alt 5. So we're just kind of stealing them away. And we're just going to run these dudes away as well. We'll go take a hatchery there. And it looks like... He hasn't... Oh, so he's been revealed, guys. So this is indeed his last building. There we go. GG. Alright, wow. See, that was scary because his army got so good. But we did do enough to damage his income and infrastructure that we could avoid fighting it. Now, his army was very weak. So, <clears throat> there is an argument to always doing something in ZVP. This is going to be a really interesting concept that gets introduced here, which is, rather than going for their economy, always go for the army. Because if I just surrounded all the stalkers here... <clears throat> He's only got one Colossus, and we probably could have killed his whole army, right? Ignore the Void Rays and the Oracle. Surround it, kill all the Stalkers, and then you can... You only need a few Lings going after the economy. So I think a general policy that we should have is kill their army with their attacks. That's your goal, because you don't want to let it grow in size. These Stalkers are not good now, but once they get two, three Colossus, a bunch of Archons, that's when they become just good meaty units to be in front of all that splash damage. But at this point, only one Colossus, very vulnerable to me. So this was the point where I should have been just smashing Banes into the middle of these units, surrounding it all with Zerglings. 
And even here, I might have actually been able to do that, but <clears throat> because I'd already traded so much Ling Bane on the buildings, I was afraid. Um, any questions or criticisms about this game that I missed in the chat, guys? I'm gonna scroll up a bit, a little bit. Let me let me know. That's right, guys. Zerg, then Terran, then Protoss is the order we're doing the Bronze and GMs in. Attacking from two sides is way above Diamond 3. Why? Why is it? We were attacking from two sides in, uh, in gold. <clears throat> in gold, we introduced that. The whole point of Ling Bane is it's infinitely better if you attack from two sides. And if you introduce that system early, you can always do that. You can just build it as a habit, right? Be like, you got Ling Bane, it's way better if you A-move two places at once. Now, you could argue I was microing it a little bit, and I was microing it a little more than I was in the lower leagues, but not that much. <clears throat> Is Drone Scout in Diamond okay? Yeah, we're doing it every game. Why did you stay on Ling Bane so long? Uh, it's kind of just the, the style. is is a mass Ling Bane style. And, uh, yeah. That's kind of, kind of the build. It's just what we do. Stay on Ling Bane and play it out correctly. Now, obviously, if I was to take this to a higher level, I could have Mineral taken the gases earlier. Depleted. And I think that's something where... I think what we, we started doing a lot, especially in ZVP in the previous episode, was as you're setting up for this attack already, going, okay, we're about to go in for this attack. Let's take those gases so that I can get more banelings for the next wave much quicker because otherwise you do run into a big wall of not having enough gas right and being able to start 2-2 and make another big round of banes to either kill them or defend a counter-attack is really important <clears throat> Fosfato says lol shame on doing this but is informative what's what's the shame on doing this what do you mean these are ethically, this is ethically sourced organic. This is not factory farm bronze to GM. This is a uh, lo locally grown bronze to GM. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, this is no, no GMO. No GMO here, man. None of that, none of that stuff. <clears throat> Uh, if the army looks unbeatable, just base trade. Yeah. If the army looks not good to fight, just base trade. And in general, we should probably always be inclined to do that, right? That's kind of what Ling Bane excels at. If mobility is your advantage, it's always going to come at a cost in any strategy game. More mobile units aren't as good at just smunch, smushing into each other. But if you can fight where their army isn't, you can do really well. I've tried playing Zerg, it's rough, says Fatboy. Once you get some macro systems down and you just kind of plan out some timing attacks, it gets a lot simpler. This is a harder way to play than my previous Bronze to GM because for people who aren't as tactically inclined, they really struggle with this idea of when to fight, when not to fight. Some people really prefer to play the more front on Roach Hydra style that we did in the other one. And um, if I were to do that again in future, I'd probably add Lurkers in. A bit earlier, I'd probably I'd probably be like, okay, we're in Diamond 2, we're adding Lurkers to the Roach Hydra style. So who knows, maybe at some point I will flesh out kind of the beginner uh, Bronze to GM build from my other one, the Roach Hydra, and like evolve that for Diamond and above, since it can absolutely work there. So what do we add? We had ZVT versus Widow Mines. What were our notes versus Widow Mines, guys? Spread units forwards to drag shots away from the center of your mass and into the enemy instead. Even better. Send 70% of your army to backstab. And just use what's left plus your rally of production to keep making banes and rolling them in five to 10 at a time into the enemy army to stop to halt their advance. Might not seem efficient, but it's just so hard. If you just keep clicking those banelings in, they just can't deal with it. CVT versus Widowmine Parade pushes. Widowmine Marine, you know. Called the Parade because they just rally across the map, right? 
So let's pair up putting back on gas with sending the Overlord in. Two things at once. Alright guys, we're going up against Bullia, a Terran player. He's actually uh, plays all races, uh, and he's been Masters with Zerg before. I don't know if he is right now or not. Um, so he's a very good player, but his Terran is not as high level, but he, he still will be very capable of some really, uh, you know, nice build orders and openings and stuff like that. Um, generally his macro falls apart the longer the game goes, but the first 10 minutes could be very scary. So we'll see how he goes. Uh, I don't know if he's been playing that much. Apparently he's an adult with like a job and responsibilities. <laughs> Loser! Well, we'll see. We'll, we'll see how we go anyways. Uh, Overlord's just going to sit outside our base here. The other one, of course, will just go across the map and get in position for the sacrifice. Send our drone down to take our expansion. And let's also set up a camera location or two while we're waiting. Fourth base. Alright. Shift two. One. Center it. There we go. Building more drones while making a fifth camera location. Making our rally point. And now let's check our camera locations are good. They are. Fantastic. Alright guys, <clears throat> so we're going to go gas with that guy, so it's the 18 gas, 17 pool, spawning pool with that one. Looks like a standard build, buildings are in their base which is the main thing, and that should be fine. Now what you can do if you're paranoid about one base, just move to there, so you'll spot if there's a command center down, then move back to the safe area, and that'll keep you completely fine. We've now got three workers rallied to gas, so we can rally over here, and you know what guys, let's not leave our workers doubled up all awkwardly. Let's make sure they're actually mining the correct patches. So this guy here, when he comes back, he's going to go to that patch there. Very nice. <clears throat> Nigel's going to go on control group two, um, army group just for now. Let's build another overlord, put it there in case a reaper jumps into our base. Um, is there a command center? There is, see? So even if we didn't look at it, we could just look at the minimap and that information would have been handed to us. Which is always really nice. So we build two queens, four zerglings. What do we do next, guys? Pull off gas. Oh, pull off. If you want to do it one at a time, you can do it like this. You don't have to. That's that's just the way I like to do it to be nice and perfect, the exact right amount. But if you just if you're at 112 gas, you just box them and pull them off with two boxes. That's gonna work too. It really doesn't doesn't matter which one you use. You see dark and hero and these guys just box them and chuck them off sometimes. All right, guys, let's try and get that third base. Now, if he micros really well, we might not be able to. So we're going to just send a drone to the other one. Keep droning. Inject. Inject. Keep droning. Sit down there. Okay, so he's microing his heart out. And if I, if I get blocked, like I said, or lose the drone, I just go build it on the other base. I don't care. But he just freaked out. He probably missed macro. I didn't. We build the hatch. Build a third queen. Build an overlord. Latifah's on the way. Heck yeah. Let's go back to droning. Make sure that's centered. Set the camera location. Awesome. Having a set play for the Reaper blocking you, just like when the pylon blocks you, keep building drones, go take your third base. These little disruptions are things which so many players get so thrown off by, but if you find you have a system, a set play you can use in that scenario, you will become so much better so quickly. So guys, we're going to put drones on gas. What you can do is shift click is another technique you could use there. Just click, shift click. And then, like, basically to select all the eggs, going do do do, you know, shift click to select multiple units. Once again, multiple ways you can do it. Try to stick to doing it one way that you like and do it that way every game so that you can build the habit, okay? Inject, inject. One more big round of drones. A few more overlords. And what do we do next? You guys know what we do. Second gas, Baneling Nest. We also want Freddie Mercury to start as well. We don't have the money right now. So we're just waiting for 300 minerals. Then we go, okay, two more queens starting. That's Freddie Mercury. Put these guys on gas. And check it out. That's saturated. That's saturated. So we're going to grab a few. Rally down to the third. Inject the third. Oh, oh, we injected out a cycle. Bad. Don't inject out a cycle. Bad pig. All right, guys. There's queens here. Woo. Or oh, aliens. Inject, inject. Build one big round of Zerglings for safety. Overlords. And remember from now on, we're going to inject in cycles. We're not going to inject this when this queen's ready. We're just going to wait for the other injects to be ready and do them all at once. Clean, organized, always taking priority. Okay, guys? Uh, let's get our double macro hatch and then double evo chamber, shall we? Freddy's out, spread a creep tumor. Shift four. Mercury's out, shift four. And we can kind of spread some creep and keep them down there. All right, inject time. Inject, inject, inject. Let's hold that drone key down, guys. 
And you can see we're at 50 drones, so I need four more. So I'm just going to build four more to make it nice and simple. Click them there, even. And uh, next up is some Evo chambers. Hell yeah. Now, I did see Hellions poking around, so I'm ready with a lot of Lings and Queens. The Queens will go out to greet them, and if they try to dive, that's when the Zerglings will fight. Remember, you've got the net and the spear. Uh, for anyone who study, you know, who knows about the the old two two main forms of gladiator in the uh, the Roman days. I always forget the name of it, but there was one of them was the guy who has a net and a, and a trident, like a spear type thing that he would try to try to catch the person in. So the queens are your trident that tries to stab the dickhead Hellions, and if they run past and try to take advantage of your lack of mobility, that's when the Zerglings come in. But they're a net. If you just chuck your net out there. It's going to get friggin' torn up. It's not going to do well. 1-1 one, one upgrades and lair on the way, guys. And here we go. This is what I'm talking about. Wait for them to come in deep. And then if we get us around, it's good. But I think we have to give this one up. Let's just back away. Don't chase too far off group, guys. It's a Viking over there. I'll send some queens over. Inject, inject, inject. Build a few more drones there. But otherwise, nothing but Zerglings and Overlords. What's that? Oh, I think there's a Liberator, guys. I just saw a red dot. So let's move. Remember, queens and libs moving into... Queens and spores moving into position. I don't know if it was or not. I'll move, put another overlord there. Oh, what is this? I brought another spore on that side then. Oh no, Hellion's coming in. I'm staring at my minimap because I can see he's trying to mess with me right now, guys. We're not going to let him get out. Those guys are going to A move to his third base and see if there's anything exposed there. And here we go. Oh, Liberator coming in. Okay. So we know he's not done. We're going to move that spore, inject, 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 build Zerglings. And this is where I could probably make Banelings and win. Let's see if we can run in. Oh, he doesn't have a wall off. He's just lifted his command center. So because he, he was, you know, throwing his Hellions and his Liberator away, we defended those. We said, oh, let's get in there. So let's put some things up in that mineral line. And we can A move these guys and see what they can do. Now, why did we counterattack there? This is actually a really good thing. You're like, is it good to counterattack? Not if you're busy at home, but I was actually on top of all of my duties this game. Maybe I was playing a bit faster than I normally should. I'm not sure. To me, it felt like getting such a clean surround without really losing any army. It was an opportunity to counterattack. And just see, oh, is there an opening? And I was absolutely happy to just pull home from there. I wasn't going to morph Banelings because I don't know if he's got a tank or anything, but... Happen to be the dream. So the Liberator came in. It didn't get too much because we were really well prepared, right? We were really well prepared with Spores and Queens, which is super nice. Was there two Liberators, by the way? I'm still confused about what I saw on the minimap. I, I really need to go back. I want to check what actually was spotted on the minimap. Okay, so we saw a Viking. Okay, so the Liberator went down the left, but then it went back. Ah, so he redirected the Liberator to come in through the middle? Wait, wait, wait. Did it fly right? And then he changed it again. Oh, F2. So Bullia keeps using the select all army key, I think, and accidentally ruining his liberator path and changing his mind. Like, what is this liberator path? Can anyone explain this liberator path to me? What is going on with this liberator? So I thought there was still a liberator over there because I was distracted. And then I saw another liberator coming in from this angle. I thought this was a second liberator. He says, I didn't use F2 a single time. I don't know if that's any better, Bulio. What, what were you doing with this lib? <laughs> were you just trying to freak me out and get a reaction? This is either 300 IQ or 0 IQ. I don't know which one. But I really thought there was two liberators. I was so confused. The art of confusion. This is amazing. I think, I think, uh, yeah, I don't know what went on there. That was crazy. That, kind of, that, that actually, you, you got me to build another spore, which was cool. Everything was just a bit messed up this game. Bad luck, mate. Um, yeah, obviously having no wall off and it's like his production's just kicking in. You give him another minute to make a big ball of Marines and he's going to be a bit more solid, but we were miles ahead in this game. So we just kind of went, hey, get in there, see what we can do. And uh, I was going to, of course, put drones back on, replace my workers, and then also make sure I started my fifth base. Because I'd started a fourth, but I didn't actually get to build a fifth base. The drone died moving out by the Hellions. Um, and of course, if the game goes longer after my first 1-1 attack, we want to add kind of extra gases, banelings, and all that sort of stuff. 
Ah, you accidentally had the Liberator on the Hellion key. Ah, okay, yeah, yeah. Because that's it, because I saw it move back when the Hellions moved back. That's why I said, like, oh, F2. Alright guys, we've got another Zerg vs Zerg. Yeah, it's good. We're getting a lot of practice with this new ZBZ build here in Diamond 3, which is going to set us up really well for the rest of Diamond. And I feel like we're just going to get better and better at executing this the more we do it. Alright, so the second Overlord will go out across the map because, hey, it's ZBZ guys. Uh, we'll send our drone out across as well. And then bring that bad boy back to mine. Now, if we want, we can double workers up a little bit here, just when there's nothing else happening. Basically, just make sure those guys get from these slightly further away patches to the slightly closer ones and you'll be all good so we can send a drone down there already and check it out we could even click these eggs to these patches that only have one worker on it now that we've already got two on all these close patches one two three four they're not necessary they'll still bounce around a little bit but it just increases the chance of them automatically going to a patch that doesn't have a dude on it all right build the hatchery shift one recenter the camera location build two more drones and what do we do with them guys oh it's only meant to be one more whoops it's meant to be 17 pool it is what it is yeah realm is actually a legend realm has been uh caldus realm has been helping organize a lot of the players and it's a real beautiful just a, a crazy crazy effort from caldus to make this uh, show a pleasure to do so thank you so much for lining up the players making it nice and easy looks like a hatch first guys so nothing crazy from my opponent we're just continuing to drone on up here and move forward see exactly what we can get set up for and we'll build another overlord on 19 here we're just trying to mine you get a little bit of extra value from drone 17 to 20 guys after 20 it's very limited uh and you know if you go far enough past that it's it's even worse but for now we'll rally to the natural since that's about to finish and as it gets a little closer to finish we'll pull these workers off these far patches where there was three workers if you just pull any workers off it's not the end of the world but just kind of introducing some concepts that we're going to uh of course what do they do guys i press return to cargo to make him go back a lot of people don't they're like oh if he's going to the wrong base what do i do just select the drones press return to cargo and they'll return to the closest base which if you've got a new hatchery that just finished they'll go oh there's a base there and they'll kind of uh move to it which is great let's build that 28 overlord that we were forgetting earlier today beautiful Build these, pull these guys back. And let's uh, remember it. 36 is going to be our next thing. So we want to build a third queen straight away, guys. We're going to go straight up to Freddy. Uh, Tifa's very late with this build. Lizzie inject, Cersei inject. And 36 drone, 36 supply. So we can build two gases, rally. Thanks for the Bezos box. The workers there and build a spine crawler. I like to build the spine a bit further back, so if I end up falling back to the ramp, the units are all kind of defending. But of course, usually we'll be defending with a build off. At about 3 minutes 30, we're going to drop that one down. Let's push this overlord back. There's no reason why we should let that be out there, guys. And you can see we can try and intercept those guys a little bit. Lizzie injects, Cersei injects, lots of overlords, lots of overlords. Uh, drones, sorry, lots of drones, lots, and then some overlords, I should say. The dude's on gas. A little bit slow for that, that's okay. And let's go for the double Evo. And it looks like that was all defended. Notice we didn't stare at the Zerglings at all. Once I A moved my Zerglings after them, I, I, I occasionally glanced at my minimap to check my Zerglings hadn't like stopped following them or anything, but otherwise we're just injecting, building drones. Get Freddy in the, in the in the choke point. There we go. Now, if you're wondering, oh, is it actually a wall off? Is this open over here? Just try to click some units on the other side of the wall. And you can see it's all fine. Lair with our first hundred gas, and then we can go third gas. So lair, third gas, plus one range. We're building on the Evo in the back because that's the least likely to die if we get attacked. Right? It's most likely this one. Got three more drones. Click them on the gas. That brings us to 42. Remember, we're meant to stop at 41, so that's very close it's about perfect move our spine crawler forward a little bit and what am i doing guys we're building overlords and uh, roaches roaches and overlords very nice uh he could technically mine those minerals open and sneak out that side i don't think he's going to and actually he's got a roach run already so interesting um of course my opponents do kind of know what i'm up to i guess with this build i'm gonna mine open these minerals we're gonna click on the minerals and then shift click there inject now the reason we do that is that allows the drone to phase through the queen just makes that a bit easier 
Still building lots of roaches, guys. So we're going to rally all of our roaches there, but these guys are going to move down to that third base to defend it. And we'll take one more drone and just mine that one, okay? Shift one, set the rally point, and then inject, inject. Nope, it's not injecting time yet, that's okay. Freddy Mercury, or just Freddy, I should say, back into the wall. Now we can go inject, inject, and building those roaches. So you can see plus one's way ahead of roach speed this game. Technically don't need to start it that early, but I didn't really need the money for anything else. And we're going to attack when roach speed's about 20, 20 maybe 30 seconds from finished. Now this is not open yet, so just remember, make sure if he keeps mining these ones, to micro him to mine that one. Just tapping roaches, tapping one more overlord. We've got plenty of supply free, so I think we're good. And where do we want to attack? Probably just down the right flank to attack this base. You can go through the slow zone if you want and go up the guts. Either way works. Yeah, actually, I think I might just go up the guts. All right, let's go, guys. Roach speeds 30 seconds from finishing. Inject, inject, build roaches, and let's go, guys. Try and squeeze out that wall off. Kind of a bit of a choke point. I'll slow him down a bit, and let's go. All right, Roach is moving across. Now, I'm going to do the conservative follow-up, guys. What's the conservative follow-up? Well, it's where we just drone up behind this, okay? So we're just going to take another gas. So this is not completely committed. And we're going to just hold down drones for that third base mine. Now, we'll need a new inject real soon. So let's move our roaches up real close. Inject, inject, inject. Build roaches. Oh, that was meant to be drones, wasn't it? Whoops. Ah, oh, well. And now we want to just move in and try to get as many roaches on him as possible. And you can see as long as they're all attacking, then that's really good. Move down, all attacking, move down, all attacking. And look, he's going to use the choke point, but he doesn't really have many roaches, so we're just going to take out that roach horn. It opens up the wall and stops him building roaches. And then we go back for an inject, because I felt that metronome in the back of my brain going, Inject! 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 Pig, you haven't done it in a while. You've been microing for a while. And I just moved the units into a position where they were all engaging pretty effectively. So I felt like there was two things. It was number one, really urgent that I did another inject. And I'm just building roaches behind this, by the way. But also, I felt like my roaches didn't need my attention at that time. So I try to put my roaches in a position where they don't need my attention. And only then do we try to jump back and do the inject. If there's a really important micro, I'll keep microing and I'll try to find a moment where it's less impactful for me to look away from the fight, right? GG's. So a really simple game there. And this is how a lot of your games should go if you are just at matching someone who takes a third. They go like Ling Speed and then they try to take their own upgrade. But look, the, the reason is Analysis uses a, a Bailing Nest and Ling Speed and builds a bunch of Zerglings that just aren't helpful. And you might look at it and say, but isn't Analysis up on Economy? And I'm like, yes. But the question is, when were they up on economy? So why does this build work so well? It's because opponents kill the worker to make a gas. We have not. So we're already up a drone in the early game. We're about half a drone, I should say. We both build four lings. Technically, if I want to skip those lings, I could be up even a few more drones, potentially. But you can see I'm up a drone or two already in this early game. Wait, 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 wait. Why am I down two drones right now? Am I confused? Did I do something wrong? Or did my, is my opponent a genius? Why am I down two drones right now? I get... Okay, I've taken one extra gas and a spine crawl. Oh, I guess it's just because I took the gas and the spine. Okay. I guess we were dead even on workers up to that point. Shouldn't I be up a drone? I guess I have a little bit more minerals available that I'm not really spending yet. I mean, I guess you have the same amount of lava as you ever played, don't you? Anyway, this should be where we pull ahead on workers. I don't normally do this build. Very rarely, guys. So you can tell I'm super pro at it. Okay, so we get... All right, so it's as the third hatchery and the baneling nest goes down and your opponent starts a third queen of their own. Suddenly, you can see he's floating lava. Six lava available. Whereas we're spending all of our minerals on lava. So this is where we start to get ahead. He's got 10, 11 workers on the natural. Mine will be completely saturated in a moment's time, right? Now... I do go ahead and build these Evos and Roach Horns at a very safe timing. If I delayed those to four minutes, then I would be a bit greedier. I would be further ahead. But it would mean we're being a lot riskier. We're playing a very standard safe version of the build. So we're actually not really getting that economy advantage I talked about. But luckily, my opponent's putting a lot of money into Baneling Nest, Ling Speed, and two Roach Horns. 
the genius maneuver there. He's going to realize and cancel that and make an Evo Chamber. Uh, and essentially, you're just putting everything into one thing. So I guess it's pretty even. I don't think we're much ahead. But just a little bit ahead on things like the upgrades. The opponent's lair, analysis lair, is somehow so early. That's a very quick lair for a three base build. And I guess just being a handful of workers ahead seems to be enough, as well as just having all of our eggs put into one basket. Very good macro by analysis. But yeah, we start massing roaches here with a very singular focus. And this is where he starts droning to get a lead, but we've already got a big roach advantage. So he needs to put everything into roaches just to defend the third survive. And if he defends the attack, then he can drone up the third and get ahead. Because he keeps droning, he's in trouble. Otherwise, I think he could have defended really well, actually. Yeah, well played, dude. This is such a basic build. You just make roaches a go. But like, and I'm like, oh, I should be ahead on drones. I'm like, I'm behind on drones. I'm like, I'm slightly ahead on drones for two seconds, and then I'm behind. I think I could probably just execute the build a little bit better or something like that. But uh, as it is, it worked out not too bad. I think skipping the zerglings at the start makes sense. If you're not going to scout with those zerglings, you really don't need them to defend. I think I'm still in the habit of just doing things for generic safety because in bronze, silver, gold, and even plat, a lot of players aren't really looking at what's going on and they're blindsided by even just four or six lings coming across the map. So building four lings as a habit is like a nice habit to keep you comfortable against very light pressures like that. Um, as we get to diamond and above, we can start cutting things like, oh, I'm building four lings and just leaving them at home with no purpose. It's like, well, we can build those reactively, man. But yeah, plus one, and just having an overwhelming roach count here is really big. Analysis was trying to get a second Evo Chamber as well as 10 more drones. It's just a bit too much diversification. And you can see that when the fight started, that's 21 roaches up against 15 roaches. Six roach advantage might not sound like a lot, but it is when you're looking at a mirror matchup of units, and I've got the plus one. And actually, he does have a bunch of roaches here. But they just sat there the whole time. Oh, oh no. It's a bad micro for analysis as well. Yeah, unfortunate for him. Analysis was trying to do too many things. Double upgrades, too many drones, link speed, a bane nest, and a spine crawler. It's just too much stuff. Analysis needs to limit his focus in this situation, and he'll find himself better off. Don't overthink it. Just have more roaches. Get them all together at the front. That's the one thing you needed to do there. All right, guys. We're playing against Hype for one who's playing random. Now, the great thing is we're still drone scouting every game. Random doesn't phase us. We will see exactly what's going on very early. And we'll know whether we're doing a 17 pool or an 18 gas 17 pool. Just bloody... Are we going the gasless CBZ build or the other one? We'll find that out real early. And a lot of people stress out, but this is so chill. With a drone scout, it really means we are never going to die to proxies. Uh, or we never should be dying to, pro to one base proxy all-ins. And uh, it just means that we should never really be struggling against random. Either. A lot of the things that people get stressed by on the ladder will be fine against. Not only that, but I've actually been surprised by like eBay block, pylon block a few times in this series. That's because I'm reading chat and talking to you all so much at the start of the game. But if you're paying a lot of attention to your minimap, if you see a worker coming across early... You can anticipate that block on your expansion, and you can actually, um... And you can actually be like, oh, he's gonna block that. Guess what? What could we what could we do if we know our opponent's gonna block it? We could send the drone down earlier, and if he does go for the block, we just go take our third, but we still get it down without much delay, right? Um, there's a lot of little adjustments you can make with this information. So this game, I'm gonna actively just keep an eye on that drone, though, looking at it. I think if they send a worker across, it would go down this path. So on this map, that actually doesn't work because there's uh, divergent paths in the middle of the map, which depending on which side you're going to and from will affect what you're doing. So guys, we're going gas pool, right? Well, it's Protoss, so yes, we are. We just wanted to check first what we were up against before doing it. This is one of the biggest maps in the pool. And we saw a gateway. We're just going to hang out down there with the drone to check if the Nexus goes up. And our Overlord is going to be outside the base up there, ready for that sacrifice, okay? So we've got the three drones. They go on gas. We rally the natural. And that's a Nexus. Cool. I just wanted to confirm that. I figured, hey, I want my Overlord to be up here for the sacrifice. We might as well hang around to check that my opponent's expanding. 
I'm gonna build another overlord. So check it out, guys. We've got overlord there, overlord out here. I think we'll go fourth base on the right side, actually, and then fifth in the top left. Keep building drones, and this is awesome. How much is map knowledge? 100 of your ELO or 1,000? Map knowledge really doesn't matter much. All right, we'll build four links. And you know what, guys? We're in Diamond 3. Let's send those links across the map. Let's see if they can do something this game. I'll actually use the Overlord up front to see if the Adept comes in. So my links will go to the right, and if an Adept goes across, we'll backstab with it. Just a nice little adjustment for the matchup. Why not, guys? Little things like that will make a huge difference. We pull off gas, we start link speed, send a drone to the third. We like to put that on our builder key, which is our secondary army key. We only really use a builder key in the very early game when we don't ever have a secondary army key, which is why it's fine. We're just gonna move this guy back up there. Inject, inject. Lizzie and Cersei on the field, guys. Third base goes down. It always feels like that's misplaced because the circle is in a weird spot. Third queen starts. We'll try to click these guys in, see if they can get inside. And the overlord has to come down as well. Move these overlords out. Go back to droning. Oh, there's a zealot in the wall. And a void ray is building, guys. So guess what? We've got the scouting we need. Let's just move this overlord back, shall we? Inject, inject. Guess what, guys? We're gonna actually click the hatchery, build the three drones. We remembered to build the drones from the hatchery, so that easily that's the easiest way to rally those drones back on gas. Isn't that nice? Now, because there's a void ray, you could argue, well, don't you? You could pull back all the overlords. I'm not going to, because I think having vision is really nice. If we lose a few overlords, we lose a few overlords. At higher level, with better awareness, we would start to fix that. But for now, we don't need to worry about it. Inject, inject. And, uh, build more drones. We're gonna build Freddy Mercury first because in case the Void Ray comes over, we want to have Freddy Mercury. So Latifah's going over. So we're starting those the moment this Overlord pops. And in the meantime, we're gonna rally back to this base. Wait, get the second gas, get the bay nest. We don't really need them yet, and when we get to higher levels. We'll actually adjust to the build order more. For now, should be fine. Let's put these guys on gas. Let's rally to that base. Inject, inject, inject. Build a big round of drones. We also don't need the safety Zerglings, guys, because there's a Void Ray. So what would we need to build Zerglings for right now? Nothing. So we're going to drone our third base up. So we are making one adaptation in that regard. We're going to build a lot more Overlords to the back here. And this Void Ray, these queens are going to kind of go in there, chase you off. He runs away. So let's spread creep with Freddy. Oh, hello. Now I could start a step, guys. Move forward so he can't escape. And we're going to run these drones away, okay? Let's organize. So this is Freddy. Move down here. Shift 4. Inject Cersei. Mercury. Shift 4. A move. 4, A move. Okay, guys? We're going to build a spore in each base. Now, why didn't you build a spore earlier, pig? Well, I thought he was only going to build Void Rays. And you don't need spores versus Void Rays, okay? We're going to build a new Latifah there. We're droning the bases. And what do we do now? Double Evo Chamber, Lair. Inject, inject, inject. Spread some creep. Sorry guys, I can hear someone at my door and I'm like zoning out listening to them. I'm like, what are they talking about? It's rare to get a knock on your door when you're in an apartment building without them buzzing first. So I always kind of go on high alert. Like, what the hell's going on up there? Probably just our neighbors. We've got good neighbors. Anyway, build some Zerglings. Uh, shift click the hatcheries and shift one. We'll make one one in Bane Speed. Oh, look at that, guys. All right, that's that's two oracles. So we're going to add a third one, guys. It's, um... Oh, shit, I'm forgetting the bassist's name. Ah, oh, I learned the bassist from the comments on the last one. Uh, Don... It's Don something? Oh, God. Guys, hit me up with that queen, queen bassist's name. Anyways... Because the oracles are fighting me, we're going to build a few more queens. We're going to make sure we get a new replacement bassist here. Um, actually, Brian May is like the, uh, the, the the other guy, right? So we'll go Brian May there. Anyways, um, Baneling Speed on the way. That's a lot of Void Rays, right? Uh-oh. All right, so we're going to A-move our Lings across to the two third bases. Let's go fourth base, 
fifth base. Let's move My our man. queens over there. Let's make sure our creeps connecting our bases. We will build two gases and a spire here. Build some drones. Build some drones on the gases. I don't want to go too hard on that stuff, but just kind of you know see what it is. Okay, cool. So he's he's going like cannons, batteries, sky toss by the looks of it. We're just gonna put lings all over this map, guys. I'm gonna take a two second break for the APM of a diamond player. Oh, he's there. Queens are nearby. My man. We're gonna build a new Lizzie there. Add Lizzie into the hotkey. These guys are gonna go down there and then A move to defend our fourth. Shift one, shift one. Lings are going to go there. And he's going to try and mass expand. So we got to be real careful. So we're going to take some workers, move them out. And let's keep na uh, injecting. Inject, inject. What's our drone count? 65. Should be more than enough, right? So there we go. We're going to leave one Zergling there. Everything else is going to come together. And we're going to go, okay, these guys, alt seven, A move. Everything else at home. Let's mass up Ling Bane and get ready to do a big boss. We can't be letting him expand like this. Now, he's going to run out of energy there. So we'll let those guys do what they do. It's very urgent. We don't let him expand too much. Inject, inject, inject. Build lings. Oh, lots of overlords. Big supply block. We're very distracted because our opponent's actually been quite annoying this game. But the hatchery's finished. They give us a lot of free supplies. So we can build more Zerglings. We can also queue up injects there and over there. Okay. So once again, guys, what are we going to do? We're going to start doing run buys. Notice there's void rays. So what we're going to do is we're going to click down the right side, Alt 7. And then the other army, the main army that I'm reinforcing to, will go down the left. We're going to make Ling Bane on both. We're going to try and kill both bases at the same time, okay? Still not building anything that shoots up, except a little squad of anti air planes. That's all, okay? Nothing else there. Okay, those guys are going to move over. Let's make a lot of Banes. So notice he's kind of like, oh, okay, he's being annoying. So let's 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 run away. Let's run away with these guys, shall we? Try and hide. He doesn't know where we are. So we're gonna make a lot of banes over there. We're gonna take out the watchtower. <laughs> Cheeky bugger. All right, let's go two two upgrades in a little bit, guys. I don't have the gas for it right now, but that's okay. We're gonna build a lot more zerglings, and we do want to build more gas, more drones, because this game is dragging on. Okay. So the Ling Bane's going to run down this left side, guys. I don't think his Void Rays can deal with it. And if these guys run in at the same time, we're going to just click those in the middle line. And then these Lings and Banes are going to click down here as well. Void Rays aren't really cut out to deal with this sort of stuff. So we're going to just click past. And we're going to just grab the Bane Lings and click those on like the back keys and stuff. Clear out the mineral line. Let's go look. Did these guys do good damage? Yeah, they did some very good damage. Are they going to kill the base? Not quite. So let's grab some of these Lings and just click on that Nexus, shall we? And these guys look like they're doing some good damage. Let's try and click those in the base, shall we? Oh, it looks like he's he's managed to wall off. Okay. Fair enough. Well, we killed his bases. Let's pull back. Inject. Let's make 2-2. Two, two. Inject. Inject. And I'm going to make gases. Build drones. Click on the gas. Build drones. Click on the gas. Now, why are we making gases? Because we're going to need to build air units eventually. But more importantly for now, we actually just need more guys. Saturate the minerals there. So we're going to take as many bases as we can. Let's take two more bases on these edges. We're up to 80 workers. Oh my god. Okay, guys. Let's send all of our lings across the map. Make lings. We're going to try and transfuse that. He actually could have killed those queens. But he's chosen not to, which is very nice of him. I'm just making lings and going across the map. Something I neglected doing before. But this is the job. I didn't think he'd counterattack. I thought he was stuck turtling. We ran away from that oracle. Notice it has 15 energy, so you come back in a little bit. And now if we go back in, those lings should be able to kill that base. All right, so we'll go around. I'm shift-clicking to go around. Inject, inject, inject. And we're going to make more and more of these lings. All right, we need every queen on our piece. So go to the main, shift, four. Natural, shift, four, third, shift, four. These guys are going to go here. We're going to build few spores okay now these lings are going to try and breach the natural we're going to make a bunch of them into bane lings to help bust the wall down and it looks like he's opened that up so we can maybe spread some lings here try and get those probes that are rallying and it looks like the queen's finally able to actually defend something oh my god a lot of void rays guys so this is where we go okay you may you may feel like you're defended but he was not watching like he's got a lot of guys there oh he's watching trying to just shove in with the banelings to blow open the choke point and it looks like his stargate in the wall dies as do all of his disruptors 
And that'll allow us to kill a lot of these units. We're just going to keep making Lings and Banes because that's going to uh, smash stuff. We lost a hatchery on the side. I'll try to retake that if we can. Inject. Oh, we don't have a queen there. We don't have queens anywhere, do we? Okay. <laughs> keep moving workers to new bases from our oversaturated bases, I guess. And the question does arise, should I just build muters to deal with the void rays? If he has Phoenix, no. But if he's on pure void rays, we can make... If we have 3,000 minerals, 3,000 gas, we can make just a billion muters and kill him. We're not there just yet. Alright, the Lings are going to go across the map. He's going to dive in and just snipe the hatchery. Guys, remember, we can take damage. Replace, replace, replace. What's our drone count down to? It's, it's definitely falling. We're going to build creep and then A move over there. Our lings are going to get in. Oh, he didn't get it. He didn't stop us. Oh, that's game ending, guys. So we can... We can just kind of win the game now. Like that. Okay, we're going to try and retake that hatchery again. Oh, we've got to move down there to deal with that. Four A move. Remember, always using four for that. Let's see if we can kill that Nexus, shall we? Oh, all right. We're going to keep making lots of Zerglings. These queens are going to beat those Void Rays, which is really nice. Let's try to retake that hatchery, shall we? And uh, I think we're going to make more drones for these bases as well, right? So I'm F1, F2, F3, F4. Just checking the saturation, guys. He's doing really good, causing us a lot of trouble. So let's pull these queens back. Don't want to really lose too many of those. And uh, that's so many cannons that I've been avoiding them all game. So what we're going to do is we're going to go around the left side of the map again, guys. And I think we're going to try to save to fight these Void Rays. I think we've damaged the economy enough, killing all the probes in the main and the natural. If I can just get an Overseer, why Overseer? There was big wispy things coming out of the Nexus. That means the Mothership was building. What we're going to do, we're going to use that Control Group 3. One Overseer, and then we're going to make a shit ton of Muters. So we're just banking minerals and purposely not spending. The Lings are going to run in. We're going to drop Transfusers, trying to survive here. We'll replace, the, we'll, we'll replace the hatchery. It's not the end of the world, though. So, guys, we'll take these guys, put them on this base, since that's finished. All right. And these lings should be able to do really good. Now, let's see if we can get a few of them down here. This is a really good move. Just avoid the cannons, basically. And I'm going to queue those to kill that, move there, and then morph to Bane lings. Very cool. Alright. We've got enough... We've got enough now, right? So we're going to build a lot of muters. But because I keep losing hatcheries, these lava aren't control group. So we're going to go, doop, control click, build muters, control click, build muters. And he's being what we call a dickhead right now, guys. This is a dickhead maneuver he's doing. But he's about to get some in here. And we can roll those veins into the mineral line whenever we have the APM. And now we're focused on this. Building as many muters as we can. And we're popping on top think we can take him out oh my god he's got upgrades doesn't he i thought i thought they had damaged enough but popping on top not very good oh my god okay so we're shift clicking to try and focus let's take these guys out shall we he's making us dig deep here guys he's making us dig real deep so i i Okay, let's grab these guys, put them on a hatchery that's actually got good mining. We've got plenty of gas in the bank. These guys as well, hatchery that's got good mining. These guys, put them there, put some down here. I've still got 50 drones, which should be a decent economy. But, uh, <laughs> let's build some lings and muters and go across the map. Now, the muters could get taken out by Phoenix, but I think he's only got like one or two stargates. So we'll see if we can dart in and then dart out, hey? Um, behind it, I've got some lings and some muters to go do damage. Behind it, we're just going to try to drone back up. The same thing we've been doing all game long, okay? A few drones there, a few drones there, a few drones here. Let's queue some injects up. I've only got that one queen, so that's okay. Okay, he's out of position with the void rays, so the muters will fly in. And now we click the lings back into the natural, because we know he's distracted. To try and pick off that base. These guys are going to kill the natural as well. Oh, okay, cool. 
what am I doing, guys? Shift clicking pylons. There's really high value when you're in their base, just depower everything. And it looks like he's not built any Phoenix, so I'm going to do nothing but build Mutas here. Looks like I killed enough of his economy that he doesn't actually have the counter. I was I was about to build Corruptors. Let's also build attack upgrades to give them more damage. Because Corruptors can tank for the Phoenix. What you do is you move them in front of the Mutas, and they do really well. But as it is, the, uh, the Desperation Mutas seem to have done it. Let's click that Nexus as well. Now, maybe he has a base in the bottom right, somewhere on that right side. So we're going to scoot around these cannons and try to find that. What's our economy at? 63 drones. Our gas mining sucks. So let's just make sure we do take some gases. What are we... That's a zealot. <laughs> Random zealot. Oh, here he is. Oh, luckily we're nearby. All right, you're going to get punished. If you want that kill, you're not going to recall early enough for building more muters. And we do manage to get it. Oh, my God. Oh, my Lord. That was a crazy game. So... What went well for us? What went wrong? We gotta go back and look at what the hell happened, guys. Um, this is obviously a lot of panic you guys are gonna have in this situation. It's gonna be hard for you to be as calm as me. But there are some rules and systems. Um, number one, keep backstabbing. Um, had I already taken a bunch of damage? I was kind of slow getting set up this game, wasn't I, man? My macro hatcheries. So why were my macro hatcheries, like, so late? <laughs> I feel like my droning was not that slow initially, but then the Oracle did some really good damage, and I guess I just spent a lot of time reorganizing the queens because I was trying to simulate a player who's not that used to shuffling their queen priorities. So I think that's the scenario where I would have been way more adept at like moving my queens around really quickly, and you guys would get better at it with time. And I think that's one of the main things to improve on here. I think you could also just look at this and say, why not just build a spore in each base? Like, so it's kind of a meta thing. If you guys, are, Thanks whenever you see a Void Ray first, they only ever build Void Rays. Skip the spores like I did. But if you're often seeing a Void Ray into an Oracle, then yeah, build the spores every game. So people will be like, well, can't you just tell us which one's better? And the thing is, I can't because I don't know wherever you are out in the world watching this at any point in time. I don't know what the meta is. I don't know what you're facing on the ladder, right? So there's certain things like if someone sees a void ray and then every time builds a spore in each base how could that be bad well what if they're just building cannons batteries void rays and just turtling and they have no harassment at all and you're building like static defense when you should be being as greedy as possible like it can't just be a dead set completely stuck uh decision there's got to be something that you want to be a little flexible on right and that's all of starcraft in general right there's this constant adjusting to like what you're facing on the ladder the moment you guys are like complete like i need something that's 100 percent solid in all circumstances no matter what you're probably gonna have a hard time because you're playing so safe that you hurt your own economy and you end up just behind from where you could be don't get me wrong you can add some more safety precautions but it's a very personal thing i can't tell you how much extra safety you'd like to invest in because every bit of safety those three spore crawlers kills three drones as well as 225 more minerals which is another four and a half drones if you build three spores you might think it's meaningless but if you do that when you're only at 30 40 drones each game guess what that's seven and a half less drones that you have the money for that's huge that's that's a massive impact it really does slow you down so i think it's actually really huge to uh to keep that one in mind now i do think he was pretty open if i counterattacked earlier i could have probably been bane busting in and smashing the third base and that would have been crucial but uh yeah overall um this game got kind of interesting because he, he cleaned up the overlords and you know what the pulling back the overlords i talked about would have been a great move i lost a lot of overlords that slowed me down so if i pulled those overlords back that would have actually been really really powerful how do you know you have enough to backstab with uh i don't that's a very kind of hard question to answer you don't you just grab stuff and go for it <laughs> i mean it's so situational so like if you took a certain point in this game and you said okay at 13 minutes in this game you did a backstab and i was like dude how do you know that's enough to run in there like that seems kind of crazy well i don't know for sure but why what made me confident enough to choose to do it then i can try to answer it but if you don't ask a specific point in the game it's really hard for me to answer that the wall didn't look like you could break it Oh, that was a very dicey decision when the disruptors were there. So I went with the disruptors uh, 
the disruptor baneling move i think you're talking about we'll get to that one uh i didn't think he'd be watching because there was a lot going on he was chasing lings around the map i really felt i could just blow the disruptors up with the banelings and we'd be fine yeah so this was the thing is the void race did a good job of controlling the map as well i got a lot of cannons and stuff now if these banelings had actually just if i'd microed them if i used my multitasking i would have shift click the banelings if i knew all these cannons i would have clicked here on that cannon and then on that cannon now why because the banelings would run here detonate kill three cannons they would then run and detonate there one at a time hitting another three cannons there'd only be one cannon and a battery left everything else would just die on its own right so with these sort of banelings run buys if you see clumped up static like that it's good to just click on some central buildings shift click on them and you're going to blow them up there'll be a bunch of banelings left over to kill the probes and whatnot it'll do really well for you as it was i still killed pretty much the entire economy almost got the nexus the fact that I didn't quite get the Nexus was a little bit of a bummer there. 23 hit points, man. But you can only micro so much, right? Good emergency wall off them. Oh, I did actually kill it with the Lings, didn't I? I did, I did look down there and split some Lings off for that. And then I just kind of backed off here because lots of Void Rays overhead. Um, if all the Void Rays are sitting there and they've got a full wall off, I would probably never run up here with Ling Bear. Are Hydras a good alternative? Yeah, Hydras are pretty good. They're bad against Disruptors, but uh, they're, they're very accessible. Good versus um, uh, Mutas. The problem is if your opponent gets to Carriers, Hydras are kind of... You've got to kind of win before they get too many Carriers, whereas Corruptors do counter them in the long run. So playing a Ling Bane style and being a bit more base tradey and then doing one big surprise wave of Corruptors or Mutalisks plays more to this sort of base tradey kind of backstabby masling bane stuff yeah he did some really good snipes on these hatcheries if he wasn't doing those i definitely think i win this game convincingly but the void ray usage was really good i was like thinking he'd sit at home and he just kept sniping hatchery after hatchery so well done by hyper one man um the counter to void rays is mass parasitic bomb yeah absolutely hydras beat them pretty hard queens beat them but you can't really attack with queens uh, Mutas do okay. Parasitic Bomb does amazingly against any small air units that stack up a lot like this. But you need a hive for that. You need to get th then build the Viper, then get the energy, and then drop the spell. So that's pretty complicated. Just building a ton of Hydras on Mutas is nice. Um, if you keep their economy small enough, you don't really need to think about countering their army. You just need to, like, suddenly build a bunch of stuff that shoots up that you should be good. Thank you very much for the raid beer. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, I was impressed by this. I was like, oh, damn, well done, dude. Disruptors holding the ramp? Like, <laughs> it's really well played, man. Yeah, these Void Rays killed so many hatcheries. Oh, my God. Because normally they're so busy defending, you can just, yeah, do it. But... Um, in general, with this style, you can just shoveling Bane into a lot of situations. Like, if there was Archons or Colossus there, some splash damage that doesn't require advanced micro i probably would have immediately backed away but uh felt like i could shove it in there wow this game was pretty wild though because that voidra account got insane i want you to fall in my bed like rain 14 voidras <laughs> like when it's the wet season at my farm. yeah i think he probably could have killed me because he has if he if he just holds at home here with like a full wall off and then cannons at that base defending. If these Void Rays went into my main right here, I lose this game. So we actually got lucky that Hyper One was, I think, distracted enough by the Ling run buys, the backstabs, and just didn't recognize at this moment because obviously he didn't know just how much stuff I had back there. If he ran in there, he could have won this game. And that's cool. That's kind of the goal with my Bronze to GM this time is to put myself in situations where I absolutely could lose and show you guys how to play from them. Um, you know, it's to slow myself down. It's not to pull out those blitzing Thanks fast, Bezos, super sorry. quick reactions all the time. I know some things I'm still doing really fast, like the instinctiveness with which I use this Queen Hot Key. Notice like that that Freddie Mercury key becomes your defensive anti-air force. It should be an instinctive, like grab them, move them over. It's so good, man. Yeah, essentially I just went in because no splash damage. And I just... I really needed to get damage as well because I couldn't afford units to deal with the Void Rays. So my decision making was kind of forced because if I didn't keep forcing the Void Rays back home, they were just going to win the game. So, and I, I didn't feel I had enough money ever to build enough muters to actually take them down, right? 
So that that's why things that's why I, I kind of was like, oh, I just need to keep base running. Look at this guy. He took some Nexus down the right side. Really bad of me to not split off some lings to go check these two bases on the right. Very big mistake. He, he snipes another hatchery there. Yeah, Zerglings, I mean an Oracle. It's gonna it, one Oracle with 56 kills, by the way. It's good, but can't defend everything all on its own. And these are the hero beans, man. Oh, so you know how he won this game, guys? He ran out of gas. He froze up and stopped taking gas. Because he actually had minerals. He had enough minerals. The Void Rays took a pretty decent fight versus my Muters. I was pretty broke. But because he didn't resaturate the minerals, if he had all of his next eye on a hotkey here, held the probe key down, and then reset each rally point and started putting on gas and stuff and like recalled maybe some of these void rays to defend gets the wall off back up here it was very costly each time i broke this wall the units lost tab is really bad for me yeah and if he got like the gases mining up if he got like six gases mining and then just went back to building phoenix and void rays here i think um very well could have taken me out but we created chaos we created a lot of problems the banelings blasted that worker line the lings kept getting in there we made it very hard for him to make cool calm decisions yeah. GG's. If you can't counter their army quickly enough, does your goal switch to rushing their structures? Yeah, yeah. Base race, as we call it. Going for the base race is, is definitely a win condition we look for. In this game, it felt like I didn't have the overwhelming Ling Bane anymore, and he had some cannons up, so I didn't feel I could do it. But uh, yeah, luckily for me, I mean, he's got six observers as well. I for one was feeling the panic. The panic. And just didn't have any gas mining this whole time. You could tell he was just too much adrenaline. And we basically just beat him with experience here and the ability to stay calm and kind of prioritize things, which is a very undiamond three thing to do in such a chaotic game to be able to read the game state and kind of draw on that huge experience I have. So I don't think this is a game where you easily emulate everything I did, but whenever you watch a game like this from a more experienced player like me, try to just look at like one thing I do in the chaos that you normally wouldn't think to do and try to like commit that to your main, your brain and go, ah, oh, in that situation, I can do that next time. And I think that's the best way to really get lessons out of these sort of games that are so chaotic and there's so much stuff going on. All right, guys, what do we got? ZVP. All right, guys, going into ZVP versus Bullet Squid. Don't know the MMR. Don't care. I know they're about Diamond 3. I see that Diamond border around their name. And you know what? What can we do better? What can we do better? What can we improve here in our games? Well, some of the games have been getting very close. I think in general, um, just organization in speed in terms of the macro hatches getting up, you know, the, the, the upgrades all getting going. I think hitting that 1-1 one, one Ling Bane timing at a crisp moment is going to be pretty important in a lot of these games. So anyways, let's keep scouting and... Uh... Alright, I was just checking all my camera locations were correct because it felt like one of them was off, but it looks like it's all good. Now we're going to send a drone down to take that expansion. Now check it out guys, that's an early probe, isn't it? So we're going to build extra drones here, we're probably going to have to go for a 19 hatchery. Which is fine. So it's about maybe seven, eight seconds delayed. But we've squeezed two more drones in. And that means we don't need to build any more drones after that, do we? So we are gonna go gas, we're gonna go pool. Mommy! Uh, guys, please help out Feodos in the chat. Feodos, let us know what you're looking for there. Looks like someone looking for some hotkey information. I don't know what stuff specifically. Let us know. Hopefully some of the experienced vets in the chat can help you out. Uh, okay, Nexus goes down. No worries. You go there. Two guys on gas. Make it three on gas. And then we can rally over to our expansion. Fantastic, guys. Okay, looks pretty standard. Looks pretty solid. We'll put an overlord out front over here. Uh, we'll put another overlord out front over here. And this should be quite nice. I think we're, we're looking pretty good so far. Okay, I can just mine from this base. If you want, you can queue it to just wait. Mine the minerals and then wait next to the hatchery so it doesn't run back all the way into the main base. That's why I did that little shuffle there. Wow. 
All right, we got four lings. I'm not going to bother attacking with those lings, guys. They're just going to chill at home. <clears throat> Ling speed starts, and we can pull off gas. There we go. And send those down to the third base. Keep droning. We want to go 32 supply third hatchery. And of course, that's going to be on the natural. Our overlord out here should see any adepts coming forwards, unless they go on some weird roundabout path. And indeed, there is an adept. Interesting. Inject going down. Um, this guy can go here. So you know what? Let's prepare. Let's change the rally point so the adept can't do anything. Do the double inject. Build the hatchery. We're then going to build the third queen. Get Latifa out. This queen I'm also putting on my creep slash defense. My Freddie Mercury key. So Lizzie, or Cersei, sorry. Lizzie's in the main. This is Cersei. She's doubling up. She's doing two queens jobs right now. Build another overlord out here. Another overlord down the bottom. And some more drones. Okay. Inject. And inject. Oh, we should let those sync up, guys. Let them sync up. So on the next one, let's not inject immediately. Let's wait a few seconds and then do it, okay? Now we can build a few more links. So we'll build six more as link speed's almost finished. And we can just aim move these queens at the adept. We could have done a four trick there. We chose not to. So it's pretty advanced. I imagine you guys probably won't usually have the reaction speed. But now we're just droning, 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 and we're rallying back to that base. We're taking extra workers off the minerals that we had safely rallied in the main. Doing them there. And guess what, guys? It's injecting time. Inject, inject. Latifah's going to go over to that base. And time for our overlord sacrifice. Our lings are going to go across the map as well. Bring those back. Build a few more overlords. All right. Oh, didn't mean to inject that. Whoops. Okay, guys, check it out. Second gas, failing that timing. <clears throat> so we can go three guys there. And then we can go to our natural. Rally them all there. Inject, inject, inject. Ooh, this is kind of awkward. Let's build Freddy Mercury. Let's build one more round of lings because two base saturation. We go second gas, baneling nest, round of safety lings, as well as Freddie Mercury. That's all now on the way. And I just did another inject out of cycle. So this is really bad habits. We just saw a DT shrine, guys. A dark shrine. So I'm going to make a lair with my... So I just select my hatcheries, make lair. And we'll try and make sport in between the bases as well. Now I'm also going to box my workers, guys. Alt 7, so we've got some defending the third with that queen. And the rest down here defending this space, because I don't know where those DTs are going to come from, okay? Freddy. Oh. oh, hello. Oh, look at that, guys! We're going to bring all of our lings over here. Don't let them escape! Oh, we let them escape, damn it. Ah, oh, well. We're going to drone up like hard, super hard here, guys. Inject, inject, inject. Um, looks like we lost a queen, so we're going to take... Lizzie's going to join up. They're going to become Freddie Mercury. Inject. And I think we're looking way better now. Let's go double Evo. Double Hatchery. And this is where we want to start using that multi-prong, which I think is the big secret we haven't really been using. So those guys are going to go on a separate key. So we've got some lings at home. We'll build a few more to support them. But these guys are going to be ready to keep backstabbing that third mineral line if there's any opportunity to, Okay. Now let's just get our hatcheries, our evo chambers all organized. Got a bunch more drones in the main. A bunch more drones in the natural as well. Get the injects going on all three hatcheries. Build some overlords. Kind of producing a little bit out of cycle, so we do have to be careful. And uh, we've got creep, creep, and creep. Because there's an Archon drop, we want more queens. So Latifah's going to join the Freddie Mercury queue. She's going to become... She's going to take Brian's spot. Uh... And you know what, guys? Let's go. What we're going to do is we're just going to morph Banes and click them in the mineral line. Because remember what's been happening? If we let our opponents mine off these bases for free, things don't go well. Inject, inject, inject. Make Bane, uh, make Zerglings, make Overlords. Make Baneling speed. And we just saw Prism in the main. Spread this creep over here. I'm going to make it very dangerous and check it out guys they would just click there no micro i'm showing you guys what's happening so you know what happened but you shouldn't even bother looking at it and these guys i can morph them to banes later once that resaturates and then do more inject 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 more lings 
All right, let's get a fourth and a fifth base building, guys. Um, what do we see? Immortals, Zealots. Now, notice, why am I hovering over there? That shows move speed when you hover over the armor. The fact that it's yellow tells us that the charge has been upgraded. So it looks like it's going to be Charge Archon, which I'm totally okay with. So these guys are going to roll in here another six banes, but I think I need more gas. I just feel very gas starved right now, guys. So we're going to take two more gases. You guys know this is becoming a common thing. And as we get higher up with this style, it's going to be common that earlier in the game, we do this, right? Where we just kind of like, okay, go and do it. Let's add these hatcheries to our hotkey. Build more lings. Just keep clicking on these bait, these probes. Looks like he's taken a fourth as well. So we're going to grab some lings and try and click on that nexus. These guys are going to come down the south side. Inject, inject, inject. Got lots of lings. And let's transfer these workers over to a fourth. Still sitting on just over 50 workers, guys. Right. So notice I box the workers and I say, you guys attack the zealots. But the nexus is still the primary target. We'll just click them away, and then these guys click in. And they're going to click on the Nexus, and then these guys can A-move back. A few seconds later, double tap number two. Just get some links to kill the probes, because those are very high-value targets. Always want to kill the probes if we can. Now we can just run away. We don't have Bane links. We're not ready for a frontal fight, guys. So we can run away, and then these guys can get in here. Oh, notice the links aren't all there, so we need to make sure he can't wall off. And then these guys can go in. And that should kill his entire economy. All right, the power of just using our Zerglings a little bit better. It's absolutely insane. Inject, inject, inject. Nothing but Lings and Banes. And we're going to try and kill that army by getting the Banelings on top of the Colossus, uh, the Zealots, and then the, the Lings to just surround everything. Okay, guys, so we're building towards a big timing, probably before 2-2, because that's a full two minutes away. But we'll see if we can do it, okay? Now, we've got lots of energy on our Creep Queens, so remember... The one-time energy dump. Don't do it like this. Just click on one a bunch of times, and then on the other a bunch of times. You guys start doing things that look flashy in StarCraft, there's a good chance you're doing it way less efficiently than you could be. Oh, he's coming. He's coming. Okay, okay. We need to morph these baits. I haven't morphed my baits yet, guys. Uh-oh. I, I thought I would be the one who was attacking, not the other way around. All right. So what are we going to do? We'll grab some lings. Oh, seven? Just 25 lings, because 25 lings won't make the difference. That's going to make sure he's basically completely all in. Run these guys, box click, box click, box click. Army's going to run down here. It doesn't matter if those lings run in and die, it is what it is. Our lings are doing stuff on the other side of the map, but we're not going to bother looking at it, guys. We are going to move in and go for the big surround. All right, let's go. Just A moving once we got on top. Not really any units to move the banelings into. So we just kind of A-moved them, and that worked out real nicely. And you can see, he was getting to a point where Zealot Archon, that's going to turn really bad for me really quickly if I let that army grow. But this time, just a small bit of harassment, rolling some Banes into a Mineral Line, massive payoff. And if you want to do that at lower investment, just do two Banelings into the Mineral Line, two or four, two or four, just keep clicking those into the Mineral Lines. Um, and try to click 10 lings into the main base from the other side of the map because you know their army is almost always going to select all army move down to defend where the bane lings came from what's the bet when i did that the army moved down and there was no one in the wall gonna go out on a limb guys gonna go out on a limb and say after that first bane ling wave went in this stalker moves out of the wall let's find out guys let's find out my man So the army had just moved out of position as well. Looked like he was going to go for a bit of a push. So this was kind of just perfect lucky timing, but it's way more banelings than I needed, right? Just four banelings would have killed most of these probes. Oh, no select all army key. Very nice. Thing is, this stalk is actually so far in front of the wall, you could kill that in just a few seconds because like five zerglings can attack that at once. They might even be able to slide by it if it moves even a little bit. So yeah, could have tried to just run some lings in as well. But uh... We see the power of just having a little bit more urgency around doing something to our opponent as well. Like, it really can be pretty damn big. And from there, we were in a very, very good spot, of course. Got into a really nice position. I think the big problem our opponent had is just how late the Dark Templar drop hit. I think it was about... Oh, this was not that late, actually. My spore barely finished in time. Okay. 
But this was just very good for me, catching those DTs. And that was all off the Overlord Scout. So even though the Overlord Scout went in late, what was our reaction, guys? We saw a Dark Shrine. We immediately went a Spore in each base. I even got an extra Spore between the bases. And we split our Lings up between the third and the natural. Because I had no idea where he was going to come from. I didn't realize we'd spotted the Prism up here. Did we? I don't think we... Oh, we spotted it for like a fraction of a second. So I didn't, I didn't know that was there. So yeah, just split your army. Build extra army as well to make sure you've got plenty of Lings to surround everything. And that'll be good. And also, look at that, guys. He would have had a third up. But this Zergling has killed two probes. He sent probes out one at a time twice now to take this base. Or maybe that was the Adept kill from earlier. Yeah, it was the Adept kill. Still, it's uh, it's denying the base all on its own. Like, how good is that, guys? Didn't have to do anything. Didn't notice this. But imagine, he could have a Nexus building this whole time. Finished probing up. Leaving a Zergling there. Such a small thing. Such a big payoff. Same thing down here. How, how huge man. was just leaving a few Zerglings there? Crazy, man. Crazy. GG's. All right, guys, this is going to be our last one. It's a Zerg versus Terran versus a 31 or 3200 Terran player, uh, Diamond 3 player. And you know what? I've been a little rusty today. So I've kind of, as we draw to the end, I'm like, oh man, I could have been a, a little bit better on some of the commentary and stuff. But I also think Thanks for the Bezos I am box. doing a good job of keeping my speed down a lot while the play of the opponents is clearly getting better. Um, that being said, I've been a bit sloppy on like forgetting scouting a lot of games and a few things like that, which here at Diamond 3 I should be much My better man. at. So I'm going to try and improve on that in Diamond 2 next week. But uh, I, I, for now, ZVP, let's bloody focus and uh, see what we can do, hey? Alright, guys. Camera location 2, camera location 3, 4, and 5. And it doesn't look like we're going to get blocked this game. We've been blocked quite a lot today. There we go. I think if, if your opponents get very aggressive with two Adepts after blocking your base, that's the hardest thing to deal with. And unfortunately, no one's done that. So I haven't had a chance to show you guys how to deal with that. But just to keep in mind, if you are up against... I know we're against Terran now, not Protoss. But um, if you are up against that, I think the best thing to do is just to build like 12 Zerglings in total. Get like about 12 out and then go back to droning. And just do that rally trick I showed you where just rally your main base back to its own minerals. And then when Link Speed kicks in, you A, move the Adepts and you just kind of fix up your saturation a little bit. You should be good. All right, guys, three guys on gas. Go like that. Yeah, this Overlord's going to spot the command center up there and then it's going to pull down here, ready to sacrifice later. Going to build another Overlord. That's going to go over here. Now, why over here? Because the Reaper can jump up the ledge. So we want to be aware of that. And third base, like I said, is over here. One, two, three, four, five. It's interesting taking the fifth base all the way in the bottom left corner. Maybe take this one instead. Actually, no, I like this. I like expanding away from my opponent. So it's just like really annoying for them to get in. Now we just saw a red dot run down. That's probably the Reaper. And we can start pulling off gas in a moment. You know what's really good, guys? People keep blocking us on taking the third. Why not just send a drone over ahead of time? We've seen the Reaper coming across the map. You can do this every game to make your life easier. That actually ran right past the Reaper. So if we send the first drone that goes down to our natural, our 20th drone straight to our third base every game, I think that's going to make our life way easier. So if you guys don't like trying to escort out the drone with the Zerglings and send a drone to each expansion and all that stuff, just go ahead, make your life easy, send the drone out ahead of time. So it's up to you which one you choose to do. Notice here in Diamond, I'm introducing decisions a little bit more for you guys. I'm saying, oh, if you want to do this, do this. If you want to do that, do that. Some of you no doubt will be annoyed. Which one's better? But remember... Getting good at StarCraft is all about learning how to make your own decisions when you're unsure if it's the right decision or not, to just confidently do it anyway and say, I think this will be good, let's let's see how it goes. And even if you're not sure, it's confidently making decisions in the absence of any sort of assurance that it's going to be the right decision. It's very good, um, that's, what, that's, that's kind of where it's good for your life skills as well, because life's often like that, right? You're committing to shit without really knowing what the hell is going to happen in this crazy world. Kind of good. Get, get, get a little a little bit philosophical for you all, you know? Bloody, bloody, it's good. That's actually what uh, Toby Luke, the Shopify CEO, was saying he thought was the biggest thing that people don't talk about enough, being the big advantage of, uh, of uh, StarCraft over chess, is the fact that there is incomplete information. And as, as good as chess is, it doesn't really prepare you for a business environment. He felt in the real world, the way StarCraft does, where StarCraft's 
got so many variables and there's no way to 100% know what's gonna happen. So you gotta kind of hedge your bets. I thought that was a fun little point you made. Anyway, this is Bronze to Jam. Let's talk more about that, hey? All right, second gas. Baneling Nest goes down. We've got Freddy Mercury on the way. We're gonna build some more Zerglings here. We're gonna spread a little bit of creep out there. I'm gonna let Latifah spread a little bit of creep before she starts injecting, because I feel like I need creep out front of these bases. And, okay, remember, the Lings are in the back. Queen up front. Inject, inject, inject. Build some Overlords and back to droning. That base is full, so let's go to our third. Grab three of them, click there. Select the hatcheries, click on the minerals. Very nice. Let's go double macro hatch straight away here. I just said 600 minerals, so why not? And you know what, guys? If they're sitting there, you can always do this one. What you do is you... Uh, uh, let's hope he's not looking. If he reacts, we run away. If he doesn't react, we move until we're completely surrounding and then A-move. That way he doesn't get an attack warning until he's surrounded. Because they're both almost dead, we can just A-move it, go back to macro. Inject, inject, inject. Hold down the drone key. Freddy. Shift one. Freddy is on shift four. Mercury, shift four. Spread that creep. I don't want to chase too far, guys. I actually chased way further than I intended to. <laughs> Busy doing other things. We've all chased with our Zerglings into a meat grinder before. Let's try not to do that. Double Evo and a lair. Let's make some more drones for this base as well. And inject, inject, inject. Oh, looks like we've got heaps of drones, guys. Awesome. That means we can take a fourth and a fifth base straight away. Oh, we're roaring. We are so far ahead of where we've been. Is this mech? Oh, that looks like mech, guys. Okay. Now, technically, what you should do against mech is build a roach horn. We're not going to do that yet, even though we're in Diamond 3. As I say that, I'm questioning myself, and I'm like, why not? Why not just get some roaches? What we're going to do instead is we're just going to go four gas straight away. Because we're going to need more banelings. So we're going to go up to those four gases. From there, nothing but lings and banes. And, oh, it was the same factory I, sw I spotted. Never mind, guys. You gotta be careful, because if you spot the factory in two different locations, uh, obviously it'll still show the old one in the Fog of War, even though it's the same factory. So you gotta be careful. Sometimes you can get some mistaken scouting information if you're not paying attention. Anyways, inject, inject, inject. Uh, building lots and lots of lings. Let's make Bane Speed. 1-1 one, one only just started. So 1-1 one, one and Bane Speed's pretty late. Two Hellions coming. We're just gonna aim move that with our lings. Thank you for the gift. And we can go shift one, shift one. Select all our hatcheries, rally them there. We're at 63 drones, which is quite a bit more than I normally go for. So this is something I was talking about and we're probably gonna start doing every game in Diamond 2 is just getting four gas a bit earlier in general. Inject, inject, inject. Just because how often are we s starving for gas after our first big Ling Bane attack and we can't afford 2-2 straight away? Pretty much always. Creep, 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 creep. This creep already spread. Looks like it's just come off cooldown. And we're going to use Freddy Mercury to dump a bit of inject on our micro hatcheries. They don't have that much energy, but we'll give it a go. And then move them back to a central location. Cool, guys. So when 1-1 one, one and Bane Speed finishes is when we attack. So we want to attack in about 50 seconds. Inject Lizzie. Inject Cersei. Inject Tifa. All right. This is going to be beautiful. We are going to roll this nerd, man. Let's go. I don't really know what the defensive setup is, but I think this is a classic chance for us to just do the old one-two punch, right? Grab a big chunk of army. Oh, seven. And the rest over here, we'll make some more banes for it as well. Ling's gonna kill that guy, nice. Oh, the Ling decided not to. Kill him! Kill him! Making more Lings. Inject, inject, inject. More Lings, more Lings, more Lings. A few more overlords. Freddy Mercury can deal with that. Let's go, guys. 1-1 one, one should be finished. All right, 1-1 one, one has finished. Oh, my main base is mined out. So let's send those. Whoa! Whoa, we ran into what appears to be like a drop. We're going to move forward so the Banings can connect. And these guys are going to hit the natural at the same time. So we're hitting the third and the natural at the same time. Oh, wow. Boom, boom. Try to get up in the main if we can. So what we do here, guys, is we click on the, the depot, and then we control click the lings, pull them back so the banes can get through. So you let the banes on the depot, and that allows them to blow up. Pretty fancy maneuver, but uh, essentially that's how you do it. Inject, inject, inject. 
mass zergling. And that is looking absolutely just overwhelming numbers for us. Way too much stuff for this phase in the game. Shutting down the Hellions was really big, and this is one of the things why Hellions are very hard to use until you get to a higher APM. Because the Zerg player can just like run out and surround them when you're not looking, and it's such a big loss to the Terran when that happens. Um, so little maneuvers like this, you know, as you start to add them in, it can really turn a game, guys. A, a huge change in results. So, you know, if you're struggling with a build, look for little things you can do to get edges here or there. Don't look for big, massive changes. Oh, my build order doesn't work. Try to get a bit further ahead. Thank you, mate. GG, well played. Thank you so much. I know some people got bops, some people got really close action pack games. I really appreciate everyone who played today, though. And, um... Good on Jim Magnifier and everyone else who played today. Thank you so much. I hope you guys enjoyed this return to Bronze to Jam. I think next week, we're really going to take all of these skills to the next level. So keep in mind for next week's episode, guys, we are going to have a lot of stuff going on, of course. Uh, if we go down here, we've got Episode 5, Diamond 2. And what are a few things we're going to really focus on, guys? Scouting every game consistently. That's going to be a big one, right? Uh, keep splitting units. So this this is kind of just reiterating stuff, but it's it's all it's going to be really big. And I think we are going to invest in one of these mutas, infestors, or hydras. Something to add to the composition. So you guys, let me know in the comments what do you want to see. Do you want to see hydras versus protoss, mutas versus terran? Do you want to see infestors versus terran and uh, mutas versus protoss? There's a lot of different ways we can do it. Uh, basically any of them complementing a Massling Bane style because it's still going to be a Massling Bane style so they're going to be complementary it's not going to be like we're just beelining to rush muters or rush hydras or anything like that it's just going to be about having a bit more tech that we add on at layer tech um, and of course the six gas transition as standard you know to sync up with that right and that's going to be really really cool so I'm, I'm looking forward to it guys i'm not sure which ones i'll do you let me know in the comments and I'll, I'll add that in here and obviously get all the planning info going for it if you guys want to see the document it's down in the description if you enjoyed the show please check out patreon down below in the description as well thanks for watching everybody see you next episode in diamond 2 gg well played